All right, everybody, before we start the show here today, today is Wednesday, isn't it, guys? Is today Wednesday? Yes. Draft night. Oh, yeah, NBA draft night. Yeah, I'm not really that into the NBA draft. Anyway, we'll talk about it when we get on the show. Um, but anyway, I want to say Manscaped. Actually, I want to say more about Manscaped, but I want to talk about Manscaped. You see them right behind me over here on my TV monitors. You see them up here. Oh, up here on the other side. There we go. Oh, over there. I, I'm gonna, what the hell? Anyway, uh, <laughs> Manscaped. <laughs> I gave up. I gave up on trying, dude. Your left shoulder, um, dude. Your left shoulder. My left shoulder. There you go. Right, no, there. right above there you. Me. No, no, no. Then the right shoulder right here. Oh, you're trying right to get there. To, okay. Yeah. There yeah. we go, right? <laughs> or, or you can lay your hand flat like you're holding the tray. Yeah, there we Vanna go. White it. Vanna White it. There yeah. you go. No, other way. Other way. There you go. There okay. you go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> Hey, Manscaped. Listen, if, um, if right now we're in late November, what's today's date? Anybody know? The 18th. All right, so November 18th today, and that means we're like five weeks away from Christmas. So I would say to all the fellas out there, guys, if you're looking for a great gift to give yourself or you gift wrap it and you give it to your lady and then she opens it up and she's like, Manscaped, cool, what's this? And you're like, it's for me, but it's a gift for you. So I'm going to Manscaped, get my stuff all right, and then you get to enjoy it. And so that's why I got you this Manscaped package. By the way, fellas, you're saving 20% when you use our promo code, great friends. You're saving 20%. This stuff right here, though, this is the bomb stuff right here. This is the ball toner. You know, this is like middle of the day. You've been sitting around all day. Your stuff's starting to feel a little sweaty. Dude, you spray this. I literally stand up right here at my desk. Oh, come on. Pull down oh, my pants. My God. Oh. Do it. Do it. I pull down my no. pants. Right blur it. Do it. I'll blur oh. it. And, and I don't. spray this. I spray this stuff right here and then i'm like ah, feels good manscaped save 20 percent by using our promo code great friends and uh they're a local company in carlsbad they're working with the show it's turned into an excellent partnership support our sponsors manscaped promo code great friends let's go Great friends, it is a Wednesday afternoon. What is happening? Kaplan and crew just getting onto the stream. If you are an early YouTuber, because here's what happens with YouTube. Everybody knows the show goes on at three, but on radio, because of commercials, the show doesn't really get on to like 308, I think. So, does that sound about right, Alex? 309? On 305? Yeah, I don't know what time yeah, exactly. Around 308, there. 308, 307 most of the time. Whatever. Whatever it is, there's the there's the stagger. But as we just come on to YouTube, we um, we see that there are people waiting in the YouTube chat room. So those of you that are here early, just click on like, come down below, comment, get involved in the YouTube chat. We're glad everybody's here on YouTube. Facebookers, do your thing, man, which is to click the share button and and send it out to your people and help build the community. And if you're on any of the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or anything else, uh, make sure you leave a review or just get involved by, uh, I don't know, what else should people do, Alex, to get involved when they're on the audio podcast platforms? Uh, rate and review. Mm, rate and review. Do that. Do that. Okay. And then if you're on radio, if you're, if you're on radio, it's just a whole lot easier. You get in your car, you push the button, you're on radio. Like every time I'm on camera, like right now, and I need to wipe my nose like this, like I'll do it, but on radio, you can't see it or hear it really, but on video, I, there's no hiding it, you know? So there I am just wiping my nose. Mm. Mm. So wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, glad to have you along. Very happy to have you here today on a Wednesday. So let me say good afternoon to mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla. He's representing the 805 Oxnard, California. Ventura County representing yeah. Grande. Como esta? I don't want to get us into a whole tangent about this topic, but I have a, a question for both of you. Have you all, and my fiance can hear this, I'm about to talk about this. We just finished breakfast and, and lunch, and we're just like having this conversation. Y'all ever considered living in downtown before? San Diego? San Diego downtown. I did mm -hmm. it. You did it. So how did you there? like it? How mm -hmm. did you enjoy it? 
I loved it. I thought it was great. But at the time, I was like super into clubs and partying, so it it fit the it fit the the narrative. Uh, and it, you, the best part about it is that if you're into like really like date dining, you can walk to Little Italy. Yeah. So we're having this conversation about she's looking for like a new place, a little bit, you know, a little maybe a little bigger, more amenities, more space for the dog. Which downtown is really not what you're looking for, but we're, we're kind of we're kind of. Uh, kind of into the whole city life and the views and and downtown these these big apartment buildings that just keep popping up everywhere that i think are fake but mm -hmm. according to their websites that people actually live in there mm -hmm. um so we're having this conversation and i'm just like first you know eight what? floors of section eight force you know there's empty floors but i guess there are some that are actually furnished or built so this is a conversation i was just having today with the fiance let me just understand something though because you know i like to analyze everything i got to think things through here a little bit mm -hmm. So you saw your, I think it was your cousin oh, or yeah. somebody. Her who, cousin. Who, her cousin, your your fiance's cousin. Yeah. Got out of a relationship, mm -hmm. rented a bomb apartment in downtown San Diego, right across the street from Petco Park. Yes. Five grand a month, as I recall. Something like that. Two bedroom place. Yes. Two bed, two okay. bath. Right. And And now after seeing his view and contemplating life in the city, and not because you've also talked about Temecula. I, I've heard you say hey, yeah, that look, was never going to happen. Yeah, no, it that's out. That's out the window. That's out the window. It's never going to happen. All, nah. all I'm saying is, is that there's a move into your future in all likelihood. It's looking okay. like it. It's looking like there is a move in my future. Out, not necessarily out of North Park. Just I think out of this particular apartment, which I love. But you know, when the fiance says it's time to go, it's it's time to go. But why? What's her deal? What's her issue? Uh, washer dryer. We don't have one um that's yeah that's really her biggest thing she doesn't have a big enough closet you know how that goes oh that's really yeah. a problem so I mean, it's just like no closet yeah. so it's just like <laughs> little little things here and there that add up where you kind of just want a, a change okay very good all right so if anybody listening this afternoon or watching regardless of platform wait no he didn't explain what he was looking at down at the downtown apartment i could say oh, yeah I, how about this I, I like i'm not gonna live there yet so i'll just tell people straight up like vantage point apartments in in downtown san diego mm -hmm. let me show tell me what's up are they cool mm. are they not let us That's know a, I, yeah. let us know hit us up on twitter <laughs> at kaplan and crew if you've got downtown living suggestions for grande fiance and dog and, and by the way, if anybody knows anything about a place called Vantage Point, let us hear your reviews. Let us know what you guys think. Yeah, Grande is contemplating know. becoming your I see, I've seen these pictures of her cousin's apartment every night on Instagram. And I'm just like, that is nice. Like, that is Listen, lovely. Dude, let's just use this clip and add vintage whatever on Instagram and on Twitter. And they'll come back to you. Because oh, it wasn't just them. The it was plenty of other ones. It, it was plenty oh. of other apartments, mm -hmm. complexes. I was just... That one popped in my head right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me say good afternoon to a man who's six foot seven inches, 135 pounds, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, a hot take machine, a black Donald Trump to some, a man who cannot believe that it's already the NBA draft tonight and the NBA season will be tipping off in a month. A guy who today is wearing a hat in, in, a, in a way that I don't know that I can rock a hat. I mean, it's really, really dope the way he's got the hat all the way up so you can see the beginnings of the fro he's been trying to grow all year long. I can't even see what's on the front of that hat. It looks like SC, but oh, look at that USC hat. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Brown himself, John Browner in the house. Yo. Hey, 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 hat game crazy today. Look, so as you can tell, I'm not recording from the studio today because there's a power issue. I found this in the closet. Mm. I was going to wear this, but mm -hmm. we're trying to get rid of that. Yeah, the, um, the old mighty 1090 hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout mm -hmm. out to Bill Hagen. Let's get some more hats rolling, Playboy. Um, tonight's a really, really interesting night. Today, tonight's always been a a, a funny night for me because I always pictured myself getting drafted. <laughs> so, That's so funny. What's so funny, dude? When when it when the night actually comes and I realize that it's the night, I always imagine like what I'd wear, uh, uh like what I would say, and so I've always walked myself through this process of draft mm -hmm. night especially mm -hmm. like in my early 20s oh man i was picking out suits and shoes and all this man and so now it's always whenever draft night comes it's always a um a, a fun night for me because my imagination gets carried away 
so I, I'm not, I say I'm not really like into the NBA draft. Um, tell me, like, give me, assume that there's a lot of people just like me, Browner. Mm -hmm. And the Lakers had the 28th pick. They've gotten rid of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this, in this deal for Schroeder and Danny Green. Okay. So the Lakers aren't really involved in the draft. I don't really pay much attention to what's going on with the Clippers. I am sort of interested in the LaMelo ball story. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm probably curious about the first overall pick, which is Minnesota. But then at number two, does Golden State stay or do they do they pick? And if they do, what are they getting to add to what they've already gotten? Right. So, I mean, these are kind of a few things that are maybe I'm thinking about, but the NBA draft, not usually top of radar for me. So you, you tell me, like, give me the sell on the draft tonight, other than you thought you were going to be in it and you already had your <laughs> shoes picked out. So there are two things to watch for. And I think the draft really begins with what Golden State does, because most people are expecting the number one pick to either be LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edwards. Um, Anthony Edwards out of Georgia. We all know way too much about the third ball son. But if Golden State takes Wiseman, I think they're going to be a KD level juggernaut. But from a defensive perspective, because now, now the kid, what, what Wiseman, just because again, just assume yes. people don't know what we're talking about. The kid Wiseman, what's his, I don't know his first name, but he, he's the kid, what's his name? James, James Wiseman, right? Mm -hmm. He's the guy that was at Memphis. Yes. Who got himself like, uh, there was some trouble. I want to say like Penny Hardaway before he was the coach yes. was considered a booster and gave like 11 grand or something to this kid yes. or his family. And then that ended his eligibility at Memphis where is now Penny Hardaway, the head coach yes. somewhere. Where's he at? Is he there? Memphis. He is at Memphis. Okay, yeah. He's the Memphis head coach. I mean, that would seem to stand to reason because I was building the story. I just couldn't get to the punchline, which was he's there at Memphis. So, all right. So Wiseman's the kid from Memphis who got, mm -hmm. who got, who became ineligible. Mm -hmm. What's the kid's name from Georgia? Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Okay. And then you got LaMelo Ball. Yeah. And those are your top three guys, huh? Those are your top three guys. Uh, Obi Toppin, the guy from Dayton. Um, it's, it's figured to go in the top five as well. There's an overseas kid who I really don't know much about who the Bulls is are slated to Is this the guy, hit, Killian Hayes? Is that so, him? Killian Hayes is uh, from oh, uh, Iowa State. Okay, how about this guy? How about Denny Advija, the dude no, no, from Killian Tel Aviv? Hay Killian Hayes is from overstate. Avadija is the kid who at number four who people say the yeah. Bulls might be taking. Avadija, my Israeli Hebraic brother. Yes. he may yeah, be a Chicago Abadija. Bull. Yeah, yeah. Shalom, my man. Those picks yeah. always scare me because mm -hmm. I have no idea whether those guys can play. The mm -hmm. the, the, the Luka Doncic pick scared me. He's mm -hmm. fantastic. The Darko mm -hmm. pick scared me. He was the greatest bust of all bust. So y you just never know when you're getting one of those dudes. But uh, with a lot you of should, high you guys should see me right now, by the way. You should see me. I, I have up right now the NBA draft guide by uh, a guy named Kevin O'Connor, who's an NBA writer mm -hmm. for The Ringer. Mm -hmm. And dude, I got them all. I got like a full, I got a, in, in other words, if you said to me, LaMelo Ball, I'm like, oh, LaMelo Ball, you know, he passes <laughs> like he's on the Harlem Globetrotters and it somehow works. He needs to, in my opinion, dramatically improve his scoring efficiency. Yeah. That's just me. If you look but at the camera has, and say that you'll have everyone convinced. Right, but he has upside to become one of the best NBA playmakers. Like, so I'm going to just lie my way through. Okay. The NBA draft, because I've got this draft guide pulled up from the ringer. So how's that, Brown? Are you impressed? I thought, I thought that's pretty good. There's a lot There's a lot of talk about a lot of trades being ha a lot of trades happening. Boston mm -hmm. is trying to move Kimball Walker. Obviously, you know about Russell Westbrook. There's supposed to be a package between John Wall, the Wizards and the Rockets for John Wall for Russell Westbrook. So there's supposed to be a lot of movement tonight. And that's kind of what the draft is kind of the kickoff of mm -hmm. a lot of trades. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Tonight right, I'm be watching, exciting either way. I'm, I'm watching for the fashion show. Because everybody's going to want to try and Cam Newton this thing. Isn't this virtual? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, Isn't this I was virtual? about to say, this is virtual. So the so, fashion may be turned down a, a lot. You, you still got to rock your, your gear, right? I mean, I saw um, I saw the kid from You know from what's Miami. funny? That Browner's wearing that hat. Um, mm -hmm. I'll insert myself into this conversation that I don't care about because the Lakers won the championship. And it's, it's great not to worry about the draft. But uh, <laughs> Browner's wearing his hat. Like mm -hmm. a lot of NBA prospects wear their hat because they have hair similar to Browner. And when they get these hats, that Browner's wearing them exactly like that. Shout out to the kids. Oh, God. What are you doing? Shout out to who? To the kids. The kids.
Shout out to look the kids. How, how do I look when I wear my hat like that? It's, it is ridiculously crazy how much browner pulls it off and you just look like a moron. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, but what maybe are it's you not, no, wait, no, hold on a second. Hold on there, Mr. Viking hat guy. Because, why, don't because you, it, why don't you put your hat up like this too? Let's see what you look like, smart guy. Much better. Okay, let's see what you look like. Let's see what you – oh, my God. You look like a moron. <laughs> much better. You look like a freaking idiot is what you look like. Oh you have God. that uh, – that, you know the mammoth from Ice Age? You have that that little yeah, hair it's sprinkle yeah. little. All right, here's what's here. going on. Let me explain to everybody who's listening on radio but not watching on, on YouTube. Browner's got his hat on about halfway on the back end of his head, and it's straight up. The bill of his hat is straight up. So the USC logo isn't facing you. It's facing up at the sky, okay? Now, I'm wearing a different kind of hat, okay? I don't have a flat bill. This is one that's already been curled and crunched and, and made into my own comfort zone. And so that's why I look stupid, just so you know, Alex. Yeah, you're not wearing a hat that's fitted to wear like browners, and neither am I. Here. We each have three different yeah. hats. Hat. Give me a more hat hats. over here. Give me a hat <laughs> with hats. a flat bill. <laughs> more yeah, you do. Now. Out there, there's the, right the over there. bill isn't going to fix the issue. Turn, turn to the right and then the left. There's a, oh, his a head flat, and whiteness I'm, will not fix. Yeah, it. I need a I'm white. I need something with a I white bill. No. So that you see, Browner's hat stands out with that that wannabe afro he got. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Now you're attacking my hairstyle. <laughs> well, I've been called a moron here today, John. Hurts. No, no, I didn't call you a moron. <laughs> that see, that's that. much better. That's much better. See now better. that I now that I have on a proper hat oh. that has like the, uh, the you know the white bill. bill you know now I look bomb. Okay, you look like a you look like an old guy in a freestyle competition. Mm. Give me some bars, spit some bars, Eminem. All right, all right, all right. Uh huh. Uh. No. <laughs> No, hold on. I'm, not, I'm just getting my beat down. Yeah, you're uh, not doing jazz, dude. Right. Uh, you freestyle it. Oh, uh, 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 you I, need the snaps. I, mm. I, I, one, two, I, one, two. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. I'm a brother just trying to rock a new hat. Ooh. That's because I'm feeling a little fat. Ooh. And that fat's with a pH. That's where I'm at. Yo. Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. Listen, you know that was that? way better than I thought it was going to be. Really? Yes. Way better. Alex, now how do you think I look with yeah. my crazy hat like this versus you now, Mr. Black Bill? Much better. Much better. You look way better than I do. And you know what just took you to another level is that you just dropped some bars, which I will not be doing here today. Because mm. I don't know how to rhyme. Mm. I didn't either. Even though you did rhyme up. at six different hat. times. but great. Right, and hat and fat. Yeah. yeah. Like I use the same word over and over again. Yeah. Just because I was working off hat. Yeah. That's what I was doing, you know? Yeah. Freestyle yeah. key. Yeah, I'm working off my hat, whereas Browner working off his fro. What's up with that, yo? It's time for me to blow. Yo, we gots to go to the hairdresser, yo. No. Cut that thing. No. <laughs> See, now we go to Before I say bang. Oh, God. This is uh... I gots the yin and the yang. <laughs> He's going to keep doing it. My this professor is... of math was Dr. Wang. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm That's not even true. That's I'm writing a team for Twitter today. You're going to get somebody. roasted. What? <laughs> I'm gonna cut this clip for Twitter today. And you're just gonna get roasted. Why am I getting roasted? <laughs> I mean, or maybe praised. I don't know, uh, dude. But... I'm like the I'm like the old man Eminem. You kind of didn't like bicycle. You guys are like wear their the hats like that. Didn't Wait, like Lance Armstrong wear his hat like that when he was? Yeah, Lance he Armstrong did. might wear his hat up like this a little yeah. bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyway. I'm putting mine back to normal. Yeah, me too. I'm going back to my normal hat here. The start yeah. of this show is never what you expect it's going to be. That's the best part of this yeah. whole thing. It's never, never what you think. Mm. Well, let me uh, let me get started here this afternoon by telling you we got a great show coming up. Burke Roseman's going to be here. Excited about that. You think that the show's already taken a weird turn and we don't know what we're talking about. Bert's coming up. That'll be interesting. John Clayton will be here. We'll have some NFL insider talk, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Browner's got his mind on NBA draft tonight. I will tell you guys, Wednesday is usually the day where I start to turn the page to go to the NFL weekend upcoming. And to think that we had so much fun on Monday night with Bears Vikings uh. and Browner having to eat the hot sauce to bomb yesterday. People giving you props too, Browner. They're giving Dude, you props. Shout out. I must respect, much love to everybody who gave me props for owning that thing, man. Two-time champ. I told y'all. 
listen, I don't want to have to three peat, but I will if I have to. Okay, mm -hmm. I will if I have to. Well, it seems like you're going to have to because yesterday you placed the wager on the Eagles and Carson Wentz winning a playoff game, and they're not even going to get into the playoffs. And if they do, they're not going to win a game. So you're probably looking at, at eating one of these pocky chips before long. Or, or I'll be sitting here watching you two gentlemen eat a pocky chip, mm -hmm. which will be mm -hmm. way better. No, 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 no. We agreed doing. on the bomb. You agreed on pocky chip. So let's, I have the uh, You know what? That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Which, oh. no, you know what? No, gladly, if the Eagles, if Carson Wentz gets to the playoffs, wins a playoff game, which he will, they will be fortunate. I not even fortunate. Like they, they're gonna play a tough, a better team than them. Whoever comes out of the East is gonna suck. So, I will gladly eat the bomb hot sauce if you do it because that's just an improbable thing that I'm not worried about. Yo, know, here's a All funny right. story. I know we gotta go. I was trying to clean up the bomb hot sauce after I had eaten it, and so I ran some hot water on a plate in the mm -hmm. sink in the studio, and I almost lost my life. I was choking. I had to go out and get air. Because For whatever what? What it, the hot water basically uh -huh. made it go into the air mm -hmm. and it was it just choked the entire I mean, it's not a big studio. It completely choked out the entire room. I couldn't breathe in there at all. I had to open all the windows I had to turn the fan on. It, it was a science experiment. So now I know if I want to do like some pepper spray bombs, I know where to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have got to tell you guys a crazy, crazy story that I witnessed yesterday oh. and as dog lovers, well, in particular, Grande is a dog lover. Brown, do you like dogs? Yeah, My dog. Some dogs, some dogs. Okay. Okay. I saw the craziest thing happen yesterday to a dog. I couldn't believe what I saw. And I will just tell you that everybody who witnessed what I witnessed, everybody, you could hear the noise. Everybody in, around went, <gasps> and me and my friend who were, we were there together. We both saw it and we went, Oh my God. The dog got, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. I think I have an idea. What do you think happened? Uh, definitely something got ran over. Yeah. Like you had a dog got off the leash and got run over. It's got to be the story. It's got to be. I'm just telling Wait, you right Jane. now. I'm just telling you right now. Everybody who's there who saw it, everybody collectively went, Oh, <gasps> And then me and my friend went, oh, my God. I'm going to tell you what happened yesterday to this dog. I got to tell you this story. And then we'll start jumping into the stuff we want to get into. Stick around. We're just getting going. Everybody, if you are a radio listener and you sat through the commercials because you were waiting to get to this story of what happened to this dog that made all of these witnesses say, oh my God, uh, if you waited through the commercials, I'm going to pay it off for you right now. For those of you that are listening or watching on uh, podcast platforms like YouTube and Facebook and Spotify and Apple and so on, um, you guys are getting to it right away. So here goes. Browner. Grande, I got to tell you this crazy story. Do it. All right. So it's yesterday afternoon. Where Probably are you? Uh, I'm on the beach in Solana Beach. Okay. So every, I think everybody kind of realizes now that we do the show in three different locations. Alex and John are at separate spots in North Park. I'm in my home in Solana Beach. We don't know where John's at. Undisclosed location. Right. Parts unknown. I'm in a corner right now. That's right. So, okay. So oftentimes in the middle of the day, around like 1 30, 2 o'clock is when I try and get about an hour of exercise before we all start here at, at top of the hour, three o'clock. So I try and get some exercise middle of the day. So I go over to my buddy Blair's house yesterday. You guys know Blair, right? Blair Cannon. Yeah, my man. Mr. Speedo. That's right. So I go over to Blair's place and me, Blair and his like son, his, his like, you know, two years old little baby. We all are going to go out for a run. Baby's going to get in the stroller, right? So we go out and we do our normal, you know, place and we we head over to the beach and we start walking south on the beach. So from kind of the tip of Cardiff and Solana Beach, we start walking south towards Fletcher's Cove in this area. So for anybody who's listening who knows the area, I'm just setting some landmarks for you. Now guys, when you walk on the beach, there are homes at the top 
of the, the bluffs. And then down below, there's like a, a decline, which is all like, um, you know, like rough plants. And it's not like people plant gardens or anything. It's just all whatever is the natural habitat of the area. But mm -hmm. it's a pretty darn steep decline. Okay. And then when the decline gets down, probably about 40 or 50 feet, then there's a man-made retaining wall that that then goes all the way down to the sand of the beach. Does this make sense? Am I, am I painting enough of a picture for you? Yes, I think so. Okay. Okay. Houses at the top of the street, a very sharp decline with natural roughage. I don't know what the hell you'd call it. Okay. Like there's lettuce plants, I guess. I natural, plant. whatever it is. It, it, it's pretty steep decline. Nobody, nobody's walking from their house and walking down to the beach from here. It's, it's, it, this is just nature, right? And then down at the bottom, 40, 50 foot wall, retaining wall, man-made retaining wall. You can, you can tell, and it goes all the way down to the beach. So we're walking on the beach, Blair and I, and, and his little baby in the strollers, baby sleeping at this point. And we're walking along on the beach because we just couldn't muster the energy to run. And we can see that at the top of the hill at this house, there's people and they're yelling down to two dogs. And the two dogs are on this steep decline. And they're kind of going back and forth. You know, they're not going up and down. They had come down, then they were coming across. And instead of these dogs thinking, whoa, <laughs> this is uh, uncomfortable and dangerous, I'm going to turn around and go up, even though I'm going to have to climb the hill. I'm going up the hill back to where the humans are going, come here. Come here, come here, boy. Mm -hmm. Come here, boy. Come here. Right. The, let me go back to the humans. Let me go back up the hill. So these dogs are running sideways and sideways, and they're kind of having a great time like dogs might. But the people up at the top of the hill are going, come on, come back here. Come back here, boy. And me and Blair are walking on the beach, and there are lots of people on the beach. Because, Alex, you showed us pictures the other day of um, down in Ocean OB. Beach, how, how far out the, the water was going. Same mm -hmm. thing here in Solana Beach. I mean, you could walk out, you know, 100, 200 yards out into where the ocean normally is, and you could see what the bottom of the ocean was. I, I don't, what do they call this? There's, there's actually tide? a name. The King no, no, tide. no, no, no. King Tide. Yeah. 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 So it's much bigger than mm -hmm. low tide. It's like it's a king. Much bigger. So it's King Tide, and there's lots of people on the beach, and these dogs are running back and forth, and the people up top are going, come on, come here, boy. And the dogs are not having it, they're just out there doing their own thing. And, um, everybody's kind of now watching from the beach. Everybody's looking up like, Oh my God, there's those dogs up there. And those dogs are, are in a really dangerous spot. And the people up at the top are going, come back up. And the one dog starts to kind of like realize, Oh, I'm in a bad spot. The other dog now runs down the, to the bottom of the hill where the man-made retaining wall is. And the dog is running on the retaining wall. On on the so it the made it the, it made it down the incline yeah top of the retaining the wall. wall wall is a straight drop down okay how, how to the tall? beach 40 to 50 feet oh. okay and oh it's high and oh this is, okay this, this is changes everything feet. yeah this isn't 10 feet these yeah, houses are yeah. way this up top the beach everything. is way down below the the house is way up here the beach is way down here the, the people are screaming for the dog because they know the dog's now in a dangerous spot the decline is steep and the retaining wall is straight down 50 feet uh, to the beach. I don't like where this is going. I love it. We know where it's going. So this dog, and by the way, I just want you guys to know you'll be proud of me. I didn't have my phone with me. What? I, I, when I go run, walk, when I go exercise, I actually don't take my phone because it's like my one time to unplug. So I didn't have my phone. If I had my phone, I would have videotaped this. This was going to have millions of views. This is going to go viral. The dog. How is far running. were you from the wall? I promise you that I, the house is up at the very top of the hill. I'm on the beach. I'm looking directly up at the house. So I'm right there. I okay. mean, I'm front row seat. The dog, the one, there's two dogs. One's like a husky ish kind of dog. And the other one, was kind of like a more athletic looking lean kind of a dog. Um, and so the, the, the more athletic dog, he looks like he's starting to make his way up the, the huskier kind of dog. He's running on the retaining wall. And Blair and I are watching this whole thing go down. And all of a sudden, wouldn't you know, but this dog slips. Of course. And I watch this dog 
no exaggeration at all. I watched this dog fall from the top of this wall, <laughs> 50 feet down to the beach. Boom. I heard it. I watched it. And in the, the second or two in real time that it took from the dog to fall from the top of this retaining wall and hit the sand on the beach, let's say it took a second or two. In that time, I had enough time in my mind to process. When this dog hits the ground, he's going to die. No. He's going to break his neck. Yeah. He's going to break his back. Oh, he'll yeah. break his back. Yeah. He's going to break his ribs. I'm processing this while the dog, I swear to God, I swear to you, the dog is flying through midair. His life flashed before your eyes. From the retaining wall to the beach, 50 feet straight down. And I'm processing broken back, broken neck, broken ribs. Dog is going to be on the ground squealing in agonizing pain. And on top of all of this, I'm the first responder. I'm the closest person to what's happening. I got now, questions there, now. I asked how close now, you were because could you catch it? Okay, yes, no, 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 thank no, you. no, no, no. I couldn't have caught the dog. Couldn't have caught the dog. I wasn't that close. I was, I was near the water line, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, call it fifty to seventy-five yards in front of me. Okay, you know. Okay. So now, so now, I think the dog's going to have broken bones. I think the dog's going to be on the ground squealing as the dog is flying through the air. I swear to you guys, as the dog is flying through the air, preparing to hit the sand. I hear people. You got to remember, the ocean is right behind me. Waves are crashing. It's very loud. I hear people. People on the beach, they all went, <gasps> and Blair and I went, oh my God. This dog, boom, hits the sand. I expect broken bones and squealing. I swear to you. I swear to you. This dog hits this sand, thud, you heard it, and this dog jumps right back up and starts running around on the beach. Now, you ever not, been like in a place, not, not one bit, no noise, no barking, no squealing. You ever been like where you did something and you fell and it was super embarrassing? So you were like, okay, no, I'm fine. No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, no, good. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I, I'm fine. This dog popped up so fast like he was embarrassed for falling off this cliff. And I'm telling you guys, I swear to you, every bit of 50 feet straight down. Now, like where, owners, how did he land feet? He side. landed on his side. He landed on his side. Great question. The owners are up at the top of the house. Oh my God. The people on the beach are like, come here, boy, come here. The dog is running around all over the beach. And now people are chasing the dog trying to get the dog, trying to figure out how are we going to get the dog? So now these people, I don't know what happened. They had to go one direction. More people had to go the other direction. Let's all get down to the beach. Let's hopefully get the dog. If I, if that were my dog and I would have seen that when I collected my dog, the first thing I'm doing is immediately taking him to like the animal emergency room. Because if this dog doesn't have anything wrong, no broken ribs, no bruises, no, no, nothing, no whiplash, no concussion. This dog's a miracle dog. I swear to you, mm -hmm. if that were a person, if a person would have fallen off and hit the deck like this, broken legs, hips, back, neck, death, who knows? This dog hit the deck. Boom. Blair and I looked at each other, especially as the dogs running around the beach going, did we just really see that? Did that just really actually happen in front of us where this dog did that? And, and we just kind of went on our way as we walked south and the dog ran north. It was the craziest freaking thing, man. I couldn't believe I saw this dog. I thought this dog was going to die right in front of me. I, I, my question was just no one tried to catch it because if no. people saw this happening, clearly yeah. this was going, this was inevitable. The dog was going to fall at some point. You're right. You're right. It was inevitable. No one got in position, but I think I'm going to try to catch nah, this dog. No, nah, I don't think so. Nah. Would you, would you catch, would you have tried if, if you were close enough? Would you have tried to catch somebody else's dog yeah. who they were, they were dumb enough to let their dog out back and get down into this very dangerous area and put their dog in this kind of situation? Would you try and catch somebody else's dog? Big ass dog too, by the way. I, I always, 
I'm, I'm under the belief of there are no bad dogs. They're bad owners. And so if this dog had the unfortunate uh, luck of getting stuck there, it's not the dog's fault. It's the owner's lack of attention to the dog and not having a dog in enough safety situations where it can't even get to that place. So I'd, I'd probably try to catch the dog. In moments like those, I feel like there's always video of it. And it's always like the person least able to catch a dog is trying to catch the dog. Also you know, true. like it's it's always like what you're not going to catch that dog. It's like some little old lady or something or someone that's just not physically able to. Um, there's no way I would have tried like because if it's a 40, 50 foot wall, like you ain't catching anything. Like mm -hmm. it'd be good luck catching a baseball from that high up. I mean, it's a, a dog. It's not going to happen. The fact that it popped up like that is crazy, like ridiculous. And the did what happened? Did the owners come down? Did they actually get this dog and they take I him or did you guys start so walking away? No, we started walking away because there were a lot of other people on the beach and there were a lot of other people that were trying to wrangle the dog. And I just felt like I was going to be one of 20 or 30 people chasing this dog down the beach. So there were lots of people that were like, that were as, I mean, they, people were scarred by what they saw yesterday. Like I was, I was like, it was with me the rest of the day, you know, like, damn, man, that freaking dog fell off that cliff. And that dog, I'm telling you, look, when that dog was in midair, he was like this. Arr, 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 yeah. arr, arr, arr. <laughs> really? Yeah. Did you and Blair just walk like away? That. Like, did you and Blair just walk away and just go like 2020, man? 2020. We walked, we walked away like, dude, <laughs> we cannot believe that just happened. And if that were my dog, you know, I'd be so upset if I saw my dog. Cause you know, from where these people stood up top on that hill, when that dog hit the sand, they had no idea couldn't see. for a good three or four seconds what happened to the dog. And the and other the dog just went up. The other dog started making his way back up. Like, I'm not going down there with that dumb dog. That, dog's an, that guy's an idiot. Mm. Anyway, crazy Maybe story. Me. Crazy story. But that's, you know, that's, I always say, you know, Southern California, the thing I love about living here is everybody's out doing everything. You know, like people are walking, they're running, they're riding bikes, they're exercising, they're out back with their dog, they're, they're down on the beach. They're, they're checking out this incredible, what'd you call it again? Uh, King tide, mm -hmm. you know, where the ocean is so far out and you, the lowest tide you've ever seen. I mean, just, just people are everywhere doing everything. And there were plenty of people on the beach yesterday to, to help out. So hope that dog's okay. And if you are <laughs> listening right now and you are the people who have that dog, and I've just told that story, don't worry. I don't know who you are. So, you know, I'm not calling the humane society. On Can't dog anyway. shame them or right. whatever. Can't owner shame them. Owner yes. shame them. There you go. Right. Hey, listen, it is um, Wednesday afternoon. Kaplan and crew, along with mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla, and with the man himself, Big Brown, in the house. Hey, hey, I'm trying to do a little research to see if I can find someone who took video of that dog falling. Really? What are you going to do? I'm looking, Twitter through, search. I'm looking through Instagram. Oh, smart. Smart. You know, there were a lot of people on the, on the beach. I can tell you that much. So, Hey, um, let me say a couple of words and then I want to get right into uh, some of the sports stuff that's on our mind today. I would like to start off by saying to my man, Corky from Corky's pest control. Hey, Cork, I want you to know how much we appreciate what you do. Yeah. We appreciate the fact that you kill bugs, you know, and get rid of spiders and ants. And if somebody's got termites, you can take care of that too at the best price and the best guarantee in the business. We love that you don't let rats and mice live on our property and you take care of that so we don't have to do it. And I've even had friends that have like, have had skunks or other furry creatures. They got to get rid of them. They call Corky. You have pest control problems. You call Cork, but, but Corky on the real here now, I mean, We've been at this for a long time together, you and me. We've been friends and you've been a mentor and a father figure to me in so many ways over all these years. All I can say is thank you, Corky, for your constant belief and support in what we do. And, and we're glad you're with us as a partner and a sponsor. And I ask everybody who's watching and listening, support our sponsors. And if you have pest control needs or you have any issues or you're not satisfied with who's doing it for you now, call this man, Corky. Corky's Pest Control. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Corky's. It's kind of like my Neil Diamond version. Yeah, Corky's. that was very Neil Diamond of you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right, I want to get right into it. Oh, two. So <laughs> did, you, did you just say we want to get right into it uh, mm -hmm. 40 minutes into the show? That's right. Okay. That's right. 
Okay. Feel good about that? I feel like we're about to get into it, but not right into it. No, we're not getting right into it. We're actually kind of working our way into it is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when I go running, when I go running, we always start off, we say, we're going to start off slow and then we're going to dial it back a little bit, you know? So that's kind of what we're doing here. We've started off real slow and now we're (laughs) about to dial it back. So here it goes. I want to say this. I really believed after this weekend that the Rams position themselves because of the win over Seattle. And now because Arizona and Seattle will meet tomorrow night, both tied at six and three. And because I'm not a big believer yet in Green Bay, because Drew Brees is injured in New Orleans, because I have no uh, concern about anybody in the NFC East, I really think the Rams have positioned themselves to not just be a playoff contender, but to be a real Super Bowl contender in the NFC, just because I don't think the NFC is very good. You know, I really don't. Um, So I think that about the Rams and then this story today, and it's only one guy so far, I'm not saying it's about to rip through the franchise. I'm hoping it's an isolated incident and I'm hoping that everybody is healthy and safe, but here we go. A Rams player now has tested positive for COVID. And when that happens, you got to shut everything down. And I love how the NFL teams put it. They're like, we're going to be doing our work from home. Yeah. You're going to have your meetings with your position coaches. You're going to study film from home, but are you going to work out the way you would? Are you going to call your buds and go, hey, man, let's uh, let's meet up at the park this afternoon. Let's get a little little route running in. Um, this takes away from preparation. And if you were preparing to play some sorry team like the Chicago Bears, just by way of example. Really? Then Really? Is that necessary? You could have given this explanation. You could use the Jets. Could have used the Giants. Could have used the Redskins. Who are they? Or the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. I, Don't do that to the Bears. I didn't do that. I did that to the Bears. Yeah. Don't I didn't name. I did. Well, anyway, the point is, is that if you're playing somebody bad, you your, your preparation is interrupted, but it may not be hurt badly because you're playing a bad team but you're playing against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. You're going cross country to take on Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. So I'm concerned now, how will COVID impact the Rams? Because they just had a big injury with Andrew Whitworth, their offensive tackle, who he himself had COVID. Remember during hard knocks? Remember when we were Mm -hmm. watching that? So I don't know what you guys think here, but I think the Rams I think that they're fortunate enough that they play Monday night. They don't play Sunday, so they get the extra day. And, you know, it's kind of like it's up i hate to say it this way but it's about time i guess for the rams they've been so lucky as and fortunate as far as covid goes during the season i feel like it's hit almost every single team whether it's by close contact or directly it seems like every single week somebody gets thrown on the covid list somebody they all of a sudden start working from home so i think the nfl has begun to adapt to this where players will test positive throughout and they've seem to handle it pretty well with their tracing, which really was all it comes down to is who are you close with? They wear those wristbands in practice. So I don't think it's a big deal. I really don't. I think if it becomes an outbreak, which I guess it always can become an outbreak, then it is a big deal. But one day, shut it down. You play on Monday, you're fine. I think one case at this point is going to be nothing. It's going to be not a big deal. It has to be an outbreak. I wonder who. And if we knew who, And if that person were unable to play on Monday, how that could be impactful. All right, we got a lot to get to. We're just getting rolling. Burke Roseman's going to be by. John Clayton's going to be here. We got the NBA draft on our mind. We got a lot of NFL stuff as we're looking ahead to the next week. Just stay with us. We're just getting going. Literally. All right, good. Bert's here. Bert Grossman is here on Kaplan and Crew on a Wednesday afternoon like he normally is. Um, Before we brought Bert onto the air. He's on right now. But before we did, his girlfriend, the insanely, oh, right, fiance, insanely gorgeous uh, Tanya Vasquez was um, adjusting Bert's new microphone, that big black microphone that Bert has right in front of his face. She was adjusting it. It was freaking hot AF. Honey, why do you have Browner's name written on this? (laughs) (laughs) Practice. (laughs) 
I'm Hi, sorry, Bert. Scott. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm How are you? I'm great. Bert, uh, let me ask you a question. You, uh, you, you like this sweatshirt I'm wearing, huh? I do. I just, but I noticed the Vikings hat too. Come on, dude. Seriously. Stop. You're wearing a pirate wearing hat. hat. Yeah. So what's the, what's, what do you, what's, that's true. What do you mean? We're worse on the Vikings, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. We just beat the Bears. I mean, the best team in the NFL. Uh, yeah, to the that's Bears. true. Yeah, that's true. Listen, man, uh, we five and five. We got a chance. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Bert, um, you like my pit sweatshirt, which I'm glad I do, to, I do. I'm glad you do. But let me show you what I just got in the mail that I think you're going to really love. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay, here it goes. Take oh, a you look got at the this. hard times? Oh, yeah. Why aren't you wearing it? Hard times, daddy. You don't know what hard oh, times God. are, Daddy. Hard yeah. times are when the textile workers around this country can't pay their wages, can't buy their food. Hard times are when the auto workers are out of work. <laughs> and hard time is when a man had worked at a job for 30 years. 30 years. They kick him in the butt, they give him a watch, and they say, hey, a computer took your place, Daddy. That's hard times. That's hard times. And oh, Rick like Flair... It. You put hard times on this country when you took Dusty Rhodes out. I admit, I don't look like the athlete of the day is supposed to look. My belly just a little bit big. My hiney just a little bit big. But, brother, I am bad, and they know I'm bad, and they were two bad people, and one of them is John Wayne, and he's dead, brother. See this right here, Bert? I do, yeah, I do see that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I do. I do. This is just weird. I, I don't. I have a big black mic in my face. You got hard times. He's got a Vikings thing on. This is a weird day. What do you think about Browner's hat? Because we did. We spent the whole first segment talking about Browner's hat. I, I, all I can see is the lid or the the bill on it. Exactly. What is it? Exactly. No, that we're talking about how he's wearing his hat. I like it better than his usual. You know, he wears that Eric Badu headband thing. I like it better than that. Mm -hmm. He had that on yesterday for the podcast. Yeah. If you had to guess, that on his head. If you had to guess what what hat. John Browner is wearing, what would you take? What guess would you think he's wearing? I'm going to go with the Bulls. Ooh, I, I got a Bulls hat now, man, USC. Oh, oh. Wow. All right. Rocking a USC hat. Right. right on. Is that Southwestern College where you went? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Bert Grossman is here. In, I went to City College, by the way. Go <laughs> oh, nice. sorry. Sorry. Now, Bert, before we, uh, before we get into a bunch of stuff that we would like to chat with you about today, I would like to ask you, uh, mm -hmm. how, how is your total tea treatment going? Oh, yeah. Tell me. Tell me more. I got my levels the other day. You know, earlier I was at the hysterectomy thing at like 280. I was 1,100. Woo! 1,100. Yeah. Don't call yeah. it a comeback. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. What are you supposed well, to be at? I think a I think they say from like eight to to a thousand or eight to eleven hundred. It's normal. So you're yeah. off the charts. But yeah, and I'm like you know, DMing, trying to fight people on Twitter. You know, I'm doing all that. Dude, it's all, it's good. all coming back. It's all coming yeah, back. It's all to coming you. back. I'm. I don't actually go fight them, but I you know talk tough on the DMs and then you know, on comments, and then it's all coming back to the twenties. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah. Bert, you're, you're like you're like a new man. I mean, first of all, you look great. You, you look chiseled all of a sudden. And I know it's not because you're working out. No, I'm not. That's, a, that's the best part about it. You ain't got to work out. I don't get hangovers anymore. I don't have insomnia anymore. I still drink, but I don't get hangovers. But I don't work out, so it's, it's, it's kind of like my heyday, the same thing. Yeah, wow. Bert Grossman is on the total T. You can get your testosterone levels checked for free. Took Bert 15 minutes. Found out he needed a hysterectomy. Now okay. he's off the charts, 1,100. And look at him. Look at this kid chiseled ripped yoked strong and virile yeah. as a mofo yeah that's what i'm yeah you know what i'm gonna do this shit shirtless next week <laughs> <laughs> i have a i have a question i have a serious question now because now if bert's gonna sell it like that i get drunk i don't get hung over i don't work out and i've lost weight uh can i get total tea <laughs> yeah how come you're not putting alex on it I don't know. I see that, you know, he thinks he's a young guy. He's like, Oh, I don't need it yet. But you know, what happens is you get older, testosterone levels drop and you do need it. And Bert is living proof. Look at, look at, he's a different man. Especially now with COVID with the gyms closed down. Not that I go, but still, you know, a lot of like the dudes at your party, I, they all do like curls mm -hmm. on their testosterone, but nothing else. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have to do any of that. Let me ask hey, man, you a question. They say, they say curls for the girls, man. <laughs> True. Let me ask you a question and just tell me what you think of this idea. 
Don't you think it would be a good idea for guys to get for their ladies for the holidays? Total T. In other words, you come back home and you're like, honey, I got you a great gift. And she's like, what is it? And you're like, here, and you give her a card. And it's like, I'm on total T. And she's like, well, how's that a gift for me? And then you're like, let me show you. Let's, mm. let's go do our thing. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Don't you think total T is a great gift for a guy to give to a lady, even though the gift is going to me, it's really for her. What do you think of that, Bert? I do if you look like me, but if you look like Browner or something, you don't want that up on you every morning. I mean, if you're a woman, no offense, Browner, but it's true. It's true. So you, you have first to think of, about that. You know, all, I don't. First, first of, of all, first of all, first of all, let's clear something. Let's clear something up. Let's clear something up. Listen, I ain't, I ain't never <laughs> ain't about to work about me coming up hanging over top of nothing. Okay, I get requests. I get requests. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it requests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, the all right. Lady. I get mine. I, I, I get mine. I got an appointment book. Mm -hmm. I gets mines. I gets mines. I brings the ruckus <laughs> to the ladies. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tanya, I'm going to ask her if she likes tall tea. She, I don't think she, I don't, I, I can't tell whether she likes it or not. Let me talk to her. Tanya. <laughs> Scott's got a question for you. I don't know. What's the question, Scott? The question is, how does she like total tea? He wants to know how you like total tea. Come over here next to Browner. <laughs> Come on. Come on. What? What? Can, what can I? Call? Is that what you call your microphone, Browner? I call it Browner. Yeah. Come, come talk to Browner. <laughs> uh, oh, Hi, Tanya. Hi, hello. Oh my God. <laughs> Tanya, I have a question for you. I can't. Uh, hear. I'm gonna I know. Uh, Bert, ask Tanya. Ask Tanya, please, if she notices a difference in you, Bert, and your performance now that you're on the total T. He wants to know if you notice it. Difference in me and my performance now that I'm on the total T. Do I bring the ruckus? That's what he wants to know. So anything is kosher and Alex will just edit? Well, I mean, what? yeah, try not to curse. Yes. It's, it's um, we've nicknamed it the Anvil. All right, that's enough. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the Anvil? I didn't nickname anything. I don't even know what she's talking about. <laughs> you nicknamed it the Anvil now? Yeah, and this is Browner, this microphone. So we Nick, everything has a nickname here. All right. Wow, mm -hmm. the Anvil. Yeah. The Anvil Grossman. <laughs> this is the best this five minutes Scott endorsement ever. <laughs> this is Scott right here. This is nickname Scott. Let me see what that is. Oh, that little teeny tiny thimble? Yeah, with the nub, that's you right there. That's me. Circumcised. And you are the Anvil. <laughs> yeah, and this is Browner. And the microphone is Browner. <laughs> yeah. Alex, we don't have anything for you yet. Good, that's good. Keep it that way. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, Bert Grossman is here. <laughs> I'm sending that whole thing to Total T. They're going to love it. All of it. <laughs> All of it. The they anvil. Get the hell out of here. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bert, let, me, yeah. let me start you off with this. Let me, ask, let me ask you a question. You ready? Yeah. Did you see your former franchise, the San Diego Chargers, perform this past weekend in Miami against Good. the Dolphins, who've now won five straight, and Tua – Say what you want statistically is 3-0 and because he's just a winner. What did you think of your former squad, the Chargers, Burke Grossman? I wouldn't say Tua's a winner. I mean, he is a winner. But, I mean, Miami's a much better staff, obviously, a much better defense, a much better complete team. Um, again, Herbert didn't have his best game, but – you can't deny, like, six out of seven weeks he started, he's been rookie of the week. Um, it's the Chargers of the Chargers. I mean, I, I saw that Keenan Allen quote. The, they they were so confused by the defense that they just ran the ball. I mean, that is probably the worst statement I think I've ever seen or about a coaching staff in the NFL ever. I mean, how, how do you go in and say, we were so confused, we just decided to run the ball? Um, I don't know how this staff stays around. Um, Again, it's it, they probably will because there's no standard in in with the Chargers. Um, you just have to be a nice guy, and, and they have to work with you. They don't care about winning. That seems to be more important. If you don't rock the boat, then then it's fine and be mediocre. But I mean, it's embarrassing. It's 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 terrible. Mm. All right, all right. I'd like okay. to show. I'd like to show yeah, you right. guys. I'd like to share my screen with you guys. Mm -hmm. I need immediate reaction, and if you're watching. Or if you're just listening, I apologize, but there's breaking news coming out of the Chargers camp or, or facility. Uh, mm -hmm. A major change has been made in Justin Herbert. Oh, he now looks on, like man. this. You gonna... He no now way. looks like this. Wow. He got a haircut. Wow. Why do you got to do it to Herbert? 
Justin wow. Herbert went from having like this long hair to having like a crew cut. I guess he's decided the hair must be the difference. And you talk about a guy who looked like a movie star when he had the long kind of greasy looking wet hair mm -hmm. to a guy that looks like a child now that he's got this like, little crew cut going. And you guys remember the movie Problem Child? Like this is the problem child all grown up. Like he looks like a little like jerk. Um, let me tell you something. I thought he looked like Brad Pitt when he had the long greasy hair. And I think he looks like Brad Pitt when Brad Pitt gets a haircut. That's the deal, huh? Is that, yeah, you, I don't, don't, you don't, you don't see the Brad Pitt thing, huh? I Brad see more Pitt. like home alone because he's all alone in that franchise. Maybe that's his, what he's trying to do, but it, yeah, I don't know. He's more Macaulay Culkin, is what you're saying, than Brad Pitt. <laughs> he's more Home Alone. He's the only one on that in that whole in that whole program. He's alone, <laughs> <laughs> right? They, they ask him in the media guy, "What's your favorite movie?" He says, "Home Alone." They're yeah. like, "Why is that?" He's like, "Because I'm living me. it." Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm living here. that right now. Yeah, I'm home and I'm alone right now. Yeah, I don't. Uh, was, I don't. I don't think you can take Keenan Allen's quote at, yeah, at you full can. face face value, man. I think that's just a guy who's struggling and and trying to find something to say when you shove a camera in his face. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's an indictment on the coaching staff, the way that they've behaved this year and just the lack of, of preparedness at some points. But, I, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to throw Keenan Allen right. under the bus because of that. We're not throwing him under the bus. I think he's telling the truth. But you can take two interviews out there. You can take two his interview after the game where he said they did exactly what we thought they were going to do the whole game. Um, that's what Tua said. And then Keenan Allen says – we didn't know what they were doing, so we just ran the ball. That's the difference in two staffs is you couldn't say it any clearer than that. One was totally prepared and, and did what everybody knows. You know, Gus Bradley's going to sit back and, and, and run zone with no pass rush whatsoever, and, and, and they're going to lose, and he's never going to change it. And the other team mixes it up, disguises stuff, changes it up, and, and the other squad's just like, uh, we don't know what to do, so we're in youth football. Let's just run the ball. We're one sweep every time. I mean, you guys said, both, you, he also you said guys have like, both been in NFL locker rooms and meetings. How do you know the staff is bad? Scott, like for you, how did you, how were you ever a part of a bad coaching staff where you knew this guy didn't know what he's talking about? Um, pretty much all coaches don't know yeah. what they're talking about. It's really the way I saw things. Me too. Really? We 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 <laughs> play for perennial losers all the way through. I can't I didn't have a winning season since high school. And I think that coach sucked too. <laughs> so, no, but I mean, like, John, your question about that, in all seriousness, like I would look at certain special teams coaches, guys that I would work with directly, and I'd go, well, this guy really seems to know his stuff. You know, this guy really is diligent. He's prepared. He's a good teacher, et cetera, et cetera. He can convert it from the film room out to the field. And then there were other coaches who, truthfully, you just, you, you just never felt good about. You never felt confident about. And I think that if you're the Dolphins players, you look at Brian Flores and you say, well, you know, here's a guy that coached in the Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl, was groomed under Belichick. That has some real credibility to me. And I think on the other side, if you're a Charger player, you're looking at Anthony Lynn and you like him and he's a great guy and he played in the, in the league and he's worked his way up and maybe he's a great motivator. He might be. But I don't think anybody looks at him the same way players would look at an Andy Reid or a John Gruden. You know, guys that they think of as being real pros and winners and guys who've earned where they are. I'm not saying that Anthony Lynn hasn't. I'm just saying that Bert's point is, is that you have a player on the Chargers saying, we didn't know what they were doing. And you had a player on the Dolphins saying, we knew everything they were doing. That, as when you're analyzing it from Bert's perspective, I think, I think this is what I'm hearing Bert say. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how what, you, exactly. That's how you <laughs> that's know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, Keenan Allen, you know. who's been in the league, what, eight years? And he goes, we were, he literally, quote was, we were pretty confused out there. And then Tua yesterday, after, and in his Zoom conference, he goes, I thought the NFL would be a lot harder. He literally said, I thought the NFL would be a lot yeah. harder. And he said it right after the Chargers game. Yeah. So you want to talk about the difference in coaching right there? Right there. You're telling a rookie quarterback is telling the media, I thought it would be a lot harder. And an eight year, all pro, Pro Bowl wide receiver goes, we were confused out there. That's the difference between the coaching staffs. I think so, and, too. And it, won't even, and it won't even be addressed. I mean, there's a – you know, again, look at Telesco. He's hired Mike McCoy now and, and this guy. It's just like what, – what, and, and you've – what are they, 3-13 and 13 over the last, like, 16 games? I mean, it's not – their special teams are un, – eight years under Telesco have been the worst in the league by far the whole eight years. And in the NFL, it's one thing. I mean, 
your special teams are two things. It's the coach and it's your depth on the team because it's all backups that play on special teams. So if you have no depth on your team, you're going to suck on special teams. So after eight years of being a GM, you have to admit that either I have the wrong coach, which is probably part of it, and I have no depth on this team, which is on Telesco, nobody else. Bert, let me ask you this. We're talking to Bert Grossman this afternoon, and Bert is being brought to us by the Total T Clinic. Here's the setup that I, I see, and I want to hear what you think. All right, so the Chargers have lost these, these games now. I think it's, it's three or four in a row. They've, they've found ways to choke. They've found ways to lose when they thought they had victory in their hands. And then they've just been outright beat like they were this past weekend against Miami. Now here comes the perfect storm. The 0-9 New York Jets come to L.A. in the Rams' house to take on the Chargers. Is this the week where the Jets, who last time we saw them, at least that I can recall, gave the Patriots a real hard time? Not that the Patriots are great. They, they're starting to make their way back into it, at least, working their way back towards 500. The Jets versus the Chargers. What do you think happens? Oh God, I, I you know what? I wouldn't be surprised either way. Um, what what's the pro- No, I mean if they lose to the Jets, which is, is a possibility. I don't even know what the line is on the game, but what is the line for that game? I'll, I'll check find right now. out. But if they lose to the Jets, I mean, does does Anthony Lynn get fired then, or or what else is there? To- Chargers eight and a half. Oh my God! Eight and a half. Wow. I'm, and Joe Flacco starting for the Jets. I might have to put a little money on Jets. What you think, Browner? I w- at eight and a half, Ooh, that's a lot for the Chargers. I wouldn't take that bet. I yeah, I, I, I mean, wouldn't. I could see the Chargers blowing them out, and I could also right. see them losing a, a close one to by them. a field goal. By a field goal, yeah. I don't, I don't. I mean, that's just a hard game to pick. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. But, but again, if they do lose to the Jets, does Anthony Lynn get fired? I mean, what, <laughs> what do you have to do to get fired? If they lost to the Jets, you would have to fire him. No, and I'm no, the last no. person that I ever no. thought I would say that. Scott no. would say no because he wants the misery to continue. If, mm-hmm. As a professional franchise. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. If you lose to the Jets with as much talent <laughs> as the Chargers have, whether they, they execute or not, but if you get beat by the Jets, the Jets. Listen, Adam Gase is the worst coach in the league. By a period. long shot, yeah. And it's He's not even limp. close. Yes, it's not even close. He's the worst coach. In the, they're holding on to him to ensure that they get the number one pick. And if you lose to them, oh, boy. No, you get, he got to go. He mm, got to go. I disagree. I don't think that the Chargers will fire him. I really don't. I don't think they'll fire him. What, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, Firing? wait. No, no. Browner's right. You're the, you like the mis- The misery is like total T to you, man. It, it, yeah. It keeps it, him going. Gives him another yeah, week. It keeps you right. going, man. No, no. I you- like it. I like it. It's you up in the morning with the morning wood. It's your, the misery is your total T. It's true, but I just don't think – you just show me an example of when the Chargers have fired their head coach in the middle of the season. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. Um, I just don't – look, you ask the question, what does the guy have to do to get fired? Mm-hmm. You want to know the answer? Yeah. He's got to win. That's probably true too, yeah. You know, think about it. When, when you win with the Chargers, you get fired. See Marty Schottenheimer. When you lose with the Chargers, Norv Turner, Mike McCoy, Anthony Lynn. You get an extension. Get right. You don't get fired. You get an extension. Yeah. Why you know? not? And so I don't, I don't think they'll fire the guy. I really don't. I don't think they'll fire him. All right. Burke Grossman is here presented by the Total T Clinic. Alex, let me ask you a question. We have John Clayton coming up, but do we have a little bit more time for Bert? Because I don't feel like we're, we've really achieved much here. Definitely. I also want to show you guys ESPN's writers came out with rookie rankings. Mm-hmm. I'd like to present those rookie rankings to you guys through 10 weeks of the season. All right. We're going to have that coming up. Bert Grossman is here. Don't go anywhere. Okay. So if you're listening on radio, stay where you're at. If you are on podcast or if you're watching the video, we're coming like right back real snappy. Stick also, around. Uh, big yeah. Padres news today. Huge oh. Padres news, which we probably should have got to earlier, but huge part Padres news today. Okay, let's get to the huge Padres news. Let's get to this ranking of, of rookie players and more with Burke Grossman. Stay with us. All right, everybody. Burke Grossman is here on a Wednesday afternoon. Bert is being brought to you by the Total T Clinic. And Bert now has the nickname the Anvil, as we've heard earlier today from his lovely fiance, Tanya wow. Vasquez. Yes, that's right. Okay. 
Yes, that's right. Bert is here, and we got a lot to get to with Bert. But Alex, you were mentioning that there's big Padre news today, something we probably should have gotten to earlier, but we've been jerking around all day. So what's yeah. going on? Um, I think this is surprising. And this is very big news, that's for sure. Ron Fowler has sold his share in the Padres to Peter Seidler. And Peter Whoa. Seidler will Peter Seidler will run the day to day operations of the Padres now. Okay. No surprise to me. I mean, I, I guess let me give you some instant reaction to that. It's not a surprise because I always knew that when Peter felt good enough and healthy enough. Remember, Peter's battled cancer twice. When Peter felt good enough and the timing was right, Peter was going to take over the team and Ron was going to fade into the background. Ron was the front guy because he was the local. Peter was the guy who'd come in from out of town. It's taken Peter a few years, but through his initiative to help solve the homeless crisis in downtown, through the Padres experiencing low times and now starting to rise, they're, they're trending upwards, of course. It's a great time for Ron to kind of bow out as the much older gentleman. And that would look really good if, if that were the whole story. Like, that sounds good, right? Like, Peter's battled cancer. Peter's strong. Peter's healthy. Peter's younger. Peter comes from a family of baseball people. Peter is going to be the front guy. It's just a matter of when. And Ron is going to fade off into the sunset. The only thing is, though, is that I doubt that this is really the way it went down. Ron has wanted to be a winner his entire time. He might be able to retire and sell the team and go, hey, I sold the team at the right time. You know, we were on our way up. To me, what ultimately happens is this. You got two really rich guys in the same office, sharing the same office. And ultimately, you cannot have two guys who want to be CEO. And the time is right for Peter. And I would bet you that the only way Ron was willing to actually leave or relinquish control was for Peter to pay top dollar and push Ron out. To me, Ron Fowler never needed the money, therefore probably didn't ever want to sell. If I had to give you instant analysis, my first thought is, is that these two could no longer coexist. I would bet you that's probably why Wayne Partello is no longer in the franchise because Wayne Partello was Ron Fowler's bulldog Okay. And he protected Ron. And so Peter finally saying, I, I don't want this guy around anymore. Him leaving. And now Fowler, according to the reports, Alex, where are these reports coming from? Just by the way, your boy, your boy, AC. AC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So AC's reporting this. So you're telling me that the report is that Seidler bought out Fowler. That's exactly right. And Fowler will stay in an advisory in a large advisory role, according to the report. <laughs> Did it say that he bought him out completely or does it say that Ron still has any ownership at all? Um, let me double check that. I'm pretty sure he bought it out completely. Mm -hmm. This sounds like Scott Kaplan's back in the building. Oh yeah. I mean, like Peter Seidler is going to be on the show like tomorrow. Like you're texting him right now as we're speaking. I'm, I am going to um, be texting <laughs> is, Peter, you know, here, here you text him while I talk. Uh, I'll read. Uh, you love to read Kevin AC articles directly. Can I just mm -hmm. do that for you real mm -hmm. quick? Mm -hmm. Got to use the voice though. What voice? Scott uses a certain voice when he reads. Can oh, I know, but I, I can't. You know, I use, a, I use the Dusty Rhodes voice when you read it. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll, I'll use the Alex Padilla voice. Uh, Fowler, who has run Padres for eight years, sells majority. So that's the byline. The man who's guided the Padres through a transition from perennial loser to a playoff team no longer will be in charge of the franchise's day-to-day -day operation. Ron Fowler is stepping down as Padres executive chairman and will be replaced by general partner Peter Seidler. Major League Baseball team owners approve Seidler as the team's control. Um... Agree by agreeing to purchase a percentage of Fowler's stake in the team. A percentage. Seidler, a percentage. There you go. So Seidler becomes the Padres' largest single equity holder. Seidler's new title is chairman, while Fowler will be vice chairman. Right. So this is 76 a year old Fowler of power. will continue to serve in an advisory role with the team, you remain his advice, retain a prominent role in baseball's labor negotiations. Yeah, whatever. And uh, yeah. that's it. I mean, look, bottom line is this Peter was ready to take over for Peter to take over and become the face guy. Ron, don't say anything, please. 
don't, don't put Ron in front of the cameras. Don't put Ron in the newspaper. I now speak on behalf of the team. So for me to truly be the boss, Ron, I'm about to write you a check. And now I own more of the team than you own. And yeah, you've got this, uh, you know, symbolic advisory role, but we don't really need you anymore. Peter no, Sider was always Don't you love the advisory that. part? Yeah. Uh-huh. I just wrote you a multi tens of millions of dollar check. So I don't have to listen to your advice anymore. Right. But I'm going to pretend you're an advisor. Right. So now I've got Fowler out of the way. I've got his bulldog Partello out of the way. And now Peter Seidler can start to really put his mark on this franchise. And yeah, kind of got lucky with this one, didn't we? I feel like we should like celebrate (laughs) now again. Like, yo, we should should pop a bottle. Remember when Peter Seidler, you guys remember this story. Peter Seidler got mad at me. I don't know if you know this or not. And I'm only saying this, it's very jokingly, but here's what happened. When Linda um, was, was battling breast cancer, and Browner here put together the Great Friends Walk for Susan G. Komen. Peter Seidler told me that he would match the donations. If we could raise money, he would match the donations. And I think that what Peter may have said was up to like $5,000. And he was being generous at $5, you know what I mean? He was, but, you know, he's a rich guy and he said, I'll, I'll match the donations. And I think he said up to five grand. Well, wouldn't you know it, we raised like 10 grand like that. Yeah. And were we the second largest donor no. that year or something? We were the highest. We were the highest donor that year. So I called for that, Peter for, for that reason. Go ahead. For the, yeah. Well, yes. no, for that event. Right. And I, I yeah. called Peter and I said, Peter, um, good news, bad news. The good news is that we raised the money that you told us to go raise. And the bad news is we raised twice as much. And he was like, are you kidding me? He goes, I told you that I would match up to 5,000. He goes, and now you're telling me you raised 10,000 and you need me to raise, you need me to write you a check for 10 grand. I'm like, Hey, look, it's all for, you know, Susan G. Komen and, and breast cancer. And he, he gladly, let me tell you something gladly Peter Seidler stroked that check for 10 grand. We took the 10 grand from the listeners. We put it together with Peter Seidler's money and 20 grand went out because, because Peter is a cancer survivor and someone who loved the show really wanted to show love and support to to linda and they've actually become really good friends off air in real life so way to yeah, go like, peter I, I, peter used to I come remember, from like treatments right like he was he would come from places where where he wasn't at 100 percent. he would still come in studio because he was on our show was it once a week once every two weeks scott in studio mm-hmm. and he would show up like right after kids school he would be wearing like a whiz he wore a wizard's outfit one time because he came from <laughs> straight from his kid's school like yeah he's a he's a he's a lot i, th- I would say He's very close to Scott, so I think we're back in. Safe to say. I remember taking that check into the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, and those people rang that bell so loud when I when they because when you give somebody a check, they always try to be cool about it because you, it's a donation. And but she opened it and looked at it and called everybody into the front. All the women came out. They rang a bell and they wanted to take a picture. I was like, no, 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 no. There's no need to do any of that. I just came to drop off the check and congratulations. We raised the money and hopefully it goes for a good cause. And ever since then. Well, and Hey, listen, let me tell you something else. Remember this is back in the charger days when they were here, when those two cops were shot and one died, we called Dean Spanos to uh, help us, you know, start to seed a, a fund for these families. And Dean resisted. Peter called me and said, count me and Ron in. And then I was able to call back to Dean and say, Dean, Ron and Peter are in. So now you're being shamed into being in. And I was trying to help Dean, you know, with some positive PR, but of course he would never let anybody help him. All right, look, Bert Grossman is here on a Wednesday afternoon. Day. Hey, Bert, I don't know. What, what are you doing this weekend, Bert? What you got plans? None. Why well, you got something going on? Saturday afternoon, I'm coming down your way. Um, I think I've told you my, my GF's folks live down in, uh, mm-hmm. in Chula Vista. So See. I am going to, I'm going to go down past the eight. I'm going to go past Qualcomm yeah. stadium. I'm actually going to see the what's going on as it's being torn to shreds. Now. Um, I know there's some aerial shots people have seen. They're like, Oh, it's so sad. And it is sad. It really is sad that the place is being torn down and torn apart. Um, but it needed to happen. So anyway, but Bert, I was thinking maybe you and I could uh, go to seven mile casino. Yeah. This Saturday. I'd love that. Yeah, Saturday night. I'm thinking like maybe, you know, like six, seven o'clock at night. We go down to Seven Mile Casino, play some some table games. I don't know. Would you down? I'm down, man. I'm down. Let's you'll go. Take, you'll you got to take the ladies for good luck, though. Because you yeah. bozos ain't going to win nothing by yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Would you, anybody else? Listen, Seven Mile Casino is just minutes from downtown San Diego. You can visit their website, sevenmilecasino.com. You can read all about their safety protocols and how they've been super innovative when it comes to moving the casino outside and how to make every guest feel safe and happy and, and be in a clean, healthy environment. And so I would say to you, go to sevenmilecasino.com and come on down and see what's happening at Seven Mile Casino. I'm, I'm planning on stopping by on Saturday afternoon or evening. Wait, you bring up Seven Mile a lot on my segment are, are they paying but you're not paying me from them that's right. cheap bastard that's exactly wow. right that's all right. right i was just checking yeah, just so i know right. yeah yeah that's exactly right burt grossman is here and um burt we were talking about the chargers and their loss to the dolphins and how dolphin quarterback Tua says wow the nfl is a lot easier than i expected because they're doing everything we were pre- prepared for and keenan allen of the Chargers says they confused us so much we just decided to run the football Alex, you had a list that ESPN produced. Let's see what yeah. it's all about. ESPN's top rookie rankings through 10 weeks. Browner, you're going to love this one. Here we go. Number one, Justin Herbert. That's right. Number two, Joe Burrow. Boo. Number three, Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson. Double boo. Yeah, he was great. He was great. He is great. Night. He is great. Uh, number four, a tackle from the Bucks. Number five, Chase Young from the from the football team. Number six, the running back, James Robinson of the Jaguars. Here's some, here's interesting. T Higgins of the Bengals wide receiver running back. I didn't have no talent. Antonio, this is rookie rankings. You never even heard of these people anymore. Antonio Gibson, the running back from the football team, uh, lineman jets, Makai Becton and safety Antoine Winfield jr. Rank out the top 10, but Herbert Burrow and Jefferson top three, according to ESPN writers and analysts so far. Mm. No two. I'm through. I'm surprised Chase Young is that far down on the list. I thought he was going to be a much more of an impactful player in the league. And it just, it, for whatever reason, maybe it's the situation that organization is going through, but I have not seen enough of him to really merit him being a number one pick at this point. Hmm. I haven't seen very much of him at all other than on highlights when he's sacking somebody. I don't know what his stats are like. I don't have any idea, but I mean, I've definitely seen him. I mean, he looks like a beast, you know, when he's on the field, I mean, his guns are huge and he's just a monster of a guy, you know, but I guess kind of like, like a Jadavian clowny, you know, I mean, just looks the part, you know, right. but I haven't Miles seen Garrett looks the part and is effective. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Correct. Bert, what do you think about, What's going on now in the NFC West where you've got the Rams who beat the Seahawks. They're both six and three. You've got Arizona who had this Hail Mary crazy pass against uh, Buffalo. They're six and three. Seattle and Arizona play tomorrow night, Thursday night. And then the, the Rams play the Buccaneers on Monday night. So jump into that whole conversation. Did you bring up the Chiefs and Raiders again or did you forget that I missed that part? I haven't brought up the Chiefs. That's such a big game too, and that's Sunday night. Yeah. I think Chiefs I Raiders is a huge game too. It is. It is a huge game. I've got my mind so focused on uh, on the Rams and the NFC West. So, but start with the NFC West, Bert. What do you think? Um, I you know what, I still like Seattle. I mean, their defense is horrible. So you know, eventually that's that that's starting to kill them now. And and Brown and I talked about this the other day. You almost see Russell Wilson, who's a perfect quarterback start to be like Phillip Rivers because his defense is so bad and he's starting to force things because he thinks he has to, that <clears throat> it's causing turnovers. But I still like – I like Seattle. I like the Rams. The Rams are just – I'm not sold on golf. I mean, golf's great if the defense sucks, but he doesn't seem like he can put it together against a great defense. He always seems to have bad games with them. Um, and New Orleans, I don't is, – is Breeze out for the year? Two right weeks now, at least. Yeah, they, they're not saying he's out for the year, but I mean – I think it's broken ribs on each side, collapsed lung. Um, you know, Breeze, I mean, he'll do everything he can do to get back Play. as fast as he can. But if you look at New Orleans' schedule over the next few weeks, it's really – it's like a bye week. It's Falcons. Got in, yeah, Falcons twice in three weeks. And I feel like there's somebody else that's kind of a bottom feeder Eagles, AFC team. Oh, is it the Eagles? Whoa, 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 whoa. The Eagles are not a bottom feeder. But I'm not even positive that's who it is. Playoff so. team. Yeah. They're going to be in the playoffs. That's you know, what that that's division, what Browner says. Here's the here, it, no go. no here it is. It's it's so the the um the Saints have the bye week. Then they actually what's today's date? Today's the seventeenth, eighteenth. Okay, they already so had they, their bye week. My bad. They Falcons, so they, Broncos, Falcons, Eagles. There you go. There you go. Four straight games until they get to the Chiefs. So I would say if I'm Drew Brees, I'm taking four weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, Bert, you say you bring up Russell Wilson again in the Seahawks. You say that's your, your, your pick for the NFC West right now. That could change. Um, we all know your picks are not great Cowboys, <clears throat> but um, I'm really not trying to, to sidetrack the show, but I have to ask if, if Bert Grossman has ever considered creating his own perfume, maybe called Anvil with, uh, and created oh. with Tanya because Russell Wilson and Ciara just released their joint fragrance. They're all de parfum. RNC, the fragrance duo. And uh, it was inspired by, quote, their love. Mm. So you think the anvil's the same? I mean, well, I don't you, think it would be inspired can't by mine, love. Why can't mine be a body spray or a cologne? Why does it got to be perfume? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, unis- it's a anvil spray. It's a unisex. They made a unisex one. I'm asking if you and Tanya would make one as well. I'm still wearing Drakkar from the 90s. What are you talking about? Mm, you, know, nice. new you like that? Keep yeah, exactly. I don't mess Listen, with that. Who, when was the last, everyone, everyone to a man, when was the last time you wore cologne? Because me, oh, it was years ago. Mm. 30 years ago? Mm. Um, How about you, Scott? So I'm not, I've never been a cologne guy myself, but um, my son had once gotten a bottle of cologne at like some surf shop. I don't know why you'd get it there. Yeah. Anyway, anyway so, somehow it made it into my medicine cabinet. And on rare occasions after a shower, I might take a spray like on my chest and then like rub it all over myself. And um, to be honest with you, it's actually gotten some rave reviews. I'm a, I got cologne, a, better one. I'm no. a cologne guy. All right. So here's a better one. To a man, what did your dad wear? Scott, you first. Aqua Velva. All right. Alex. Stetson. Browner. Uh, the year I knew him, Cool Water. <laughs> cool Water. Yeah, yeah, cool water yeah. cologne, baby. I remember that. I remember that. I mine was birthday? high karate. High karate. Remember high karate? Yeah. Slap it all right. on. All right. Now, my, my, dad, <laughs> my dad had a second bottle in his medicine cabinet. Other mine, than too. It's scotch, Velva. though. <laughs> <laughs> mine, no, my, my daddy my, was weed. <laughs> no, my father, my father had Paco Rabanne. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Remember the weird bottle? It was kind of like a skinny bottle and had like the yeah. big shaft on the end of it, you know, like the big Whoa. head. Whoa. You know? Whoa. Kind of like Whoa. your microphone. What are you doing? Paul Brown. in a different direction. All right. Here we go. What about a uh, sex Again, panther? Deal. What? Ten percent of the time, it works every time. No, I didn't I never have heard sex of that panther. One, yeah. Well, that was right. that's an anchorman reference, Bert. You would have to be oh. cool to understand. Yeah, that. I don't want. I don't want just a <laughs> sex panther. All right. So wait a second. So so Alex brings up a really good point, which is when you take a look at the NFC West, you're trying to figure it out between these three teams. But let me ask you this: Go to the AFC West. So we know the Broncos and the Chargers are not alive they're not they got nothing to do with this but kansas city plays at las vegas the raiders are the only blemish on kansas city's record so far this year and uh what do you think about the raiders do you do you you think they're legit i think they're all right but i mean i don't i don't think they're kansas city by any means um kansas city will lose against themselves they don't get beat by anybody i mean that first raider game they're just off i mean that's part of the nfl but when Kansas City's on, and they usually are on, there's there's nobody playing with them. They don't. There's nobody that can match up with them. So again, when they lose, it's they lost to themselves, and they just had one of those games. They didn't get beat by anybody, and they're not going to get beat by the Raiders. Yeah, I agree, they might man. beat the themselves. Chiefs, the Chiefs not only did they they know that they're only lost to the Raiders. They're coming off a bye week. They're healthy now. Sammy Watkins coming back. Le'Veon Bell had two weeks extra to ingratiate in, integrate himself into that offense. I don't. I think I would bet uh, Br- Br- uh, Bert's house that. The Chiefs Whoa. win by a lot and cover. Whoa! What's the line they get the fifty game? this week? They get the fifty? <clears throat> nah. I mean, the Raiders' defense is not great, but they'll probably score high thirties, forties. I'd like to know the line. Thinking about making some bets this week. The what game if of the week's it, well, the Jets? Come on, Jets, Chargers. Well, That's Chiefs, where everybody's watching. Chiefs by seven. What if it's more than eight? No, Chiefs by seven. Yeah, I think it's actually a good bet. Take the Chiefs. That's a, yeah, that's an easy take. Isn't there, a, isn't there a stat that is like Andy Reid off the bye? Like they always give you that stat. And maybe he's like, you know, 20 and one or something like that. I mean, he's got some crazy record off the bye, out of the bye. So, yeah, this is a great week. Think about this. Thursday night is Arizona, Seattle. First place battle in the NFC West. Sunday night primetime is Kansas City against the Raiders. And then Monday night are the Rams at Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. This is a, this is a good week three. for Wait, prime time games. You forget about three. Tuesday morning on QVC, Jets, Chargers. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Home shopping network. On I, the home shopping network. I, I Tuesday at 7 a.m. Yeah, the, the Hallmark <laughs> channel. Yeah. You know, it, it's such a sad display. 
So, <laughs> hey, Bert, it is great to be with you always. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Saturday night. Everyone, make sure y'all tune into Browner and Bert. Monday, it's on YouTube now. Leave a comment in the comment section. We got a lot of comments in there, actually. So leave a comment in there. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, we, that way, we're building the show. We're going to be building the show every week. It's going to be better every week. So the more input we get, the better it'll be for y'all. So check it out. Yeah. I mean, there's only one way for that show to go right now. Uh, well, what are you trying to say? Was it bad? No, uh, it no, it wasn't show. bad. It just needs to work. The first show. First show. That's all. Oh. I love that you guys actually posted oh. it on YouTube. I thought it was great. I, mm-hmm. I thought that it was great that you guys had the guts to do that. Wow. Yeah, are you getting all these comments right here? The guts to do that. There's only one way you can go. He's saying That's it was how terrible. He That's how he I talks. That's how he talks. That's how he talks. Hater. All love. All love. You're a hater. All right, Burke Grossman, we got to roll. We'll talk to you next week. Or I'll see you all Saturday. Right. Yeah, you will. You will. All right. I'm <laughs> going to my, I'm gonna wear my Star David. Going uncut gems look. Rocket. <laughs> Your car don't want to match up with me. <laughs> we got to go. Let's get out of here. <laughs>Hey, great friends. It is a Wednesday afternoon coming up. Our man, John Clayton will be here. NFL insider report. Bert Grossman was just here. Things always get strange and sideways when Bert's in the house. And so here we are on a Wednesday afternoon. I will say this one story that we talked about with Bert that I, I, I want to make one more mention of real quick. Um, and then I want to move into some San Diego state stuff because San Diego state now has a quarterback controversy. San Diego state is going to play on national TV, which like big national TV. I'll tell you about that in a second. And San Diego State also, just speaking of their their team, I mean, they're kind of related tonight to the NBA draft, which I know is right in Browner's wheelhouse because I kind of forgot about Malachi Flynn. Dude. You know? Again, that guy, if he gets drafted in the first round, I think the fact that the Lakers are now out of the first round may affect that a little bit, but if he gets taken in the first round, he can thank Tyler Hero for that. Why do you say that? I'm just curious. Because his game and Tyler Hero's game are very similar. Size-wise, they're very similar. Oh, I thought Tyler Hero was much taller. I thought, I thought Malachi Flynn was like 6'1", 6'2", and I thought Hero was like 6'5". I, maybe I got it wrong. I thought Malachi Flynn was taller. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> I think but you what, guys are both wrong. Okay. Just for the record. You think Tyler Hero's like 5'2", and uh, Malachi Flynn's like 7 feet? Is that the deal? Uh, no, I just think you're both wrong as far as height and takes go. I don't think Malachi is is Tyler Hero at all. Yeah, I didn't understand. The- see, that, that's what I'm see. That's what I'm saying. That's the, the, his ability to shoot the basketball is why he will be taken. That's what. That's why Tyler Hero got taken. He can't go off the dribble. He's not a good passer. He can't guard anybody, but he can shoot the lights out. Malachi six one. Tyler Hero six five. Mm. All right. Well, whatever. Look, bottom line is this. I, I really wanted to start with. Uh, with Ron Fowler again. So while we were, we talked about this with Bert and then we had a small little break. And I want to tell you that I texted a friend of mine who is a, um, who is a, an owner. Answer your phone. You're getting the call. I know. Is that, is that that Peter Seidler? No, it's not. It's not. It's our boy, Craig Dato. You want to hear what he has to say? All right, hold on. Oh, this would be great. Hey, Craig. What are you doing? I'm on podcast right now. I just answered your call live. Put you on speakerphone because Browner and Alex wanted to hear what you had to say. So what's going on? Uh, I don't have much to say that's worthy of your podcast. I was just checking in. Oh, did you? We were just about to talk about this. Did you hear that Ron Fowler was bought out by Peter Seidler and that Fowler's out and Seidler's now the chairman and the face and the voice of the Padres? That's amazing to me. I'm shocked. Are you? Yeah, because I thought that this was more of a lifestyle for Fowler than really an investment. So now, now what? I don't know. For money, from just monetary reasons? No. Because this is life. No, no, I, I'm with you. I thought, to me, Fowler wanted to be a winner, and Fowler wanted to bring something to San Diego, and Seidler was eventually going to take over. But now that Fowler, I don't know if it's because they finally have won. Um, I don't think that's the case at all. I think Seidler's ready to take over, and I don't think Fowler wanted to give up control. So Seidler's like, okay, I'll write you a fat check. Now get out. Uh, no conflict. That's what I think. That's what I think. Well, I- Contentious. And again, I don't see Fowler wanting to get out. I mean, mm. he, he loved being the head of the Padres. That's right? what I think. Hey, listen, so I was just telling the guys when we hit a little break here, I texted a friend of mine who is a an investor and a part owner, therefore, in the Padres and someone who's got quite a bit of dollars. You know, they've got some real dough in the Padres. And I texted him. I said, hey, Fowler out. And he said, what do you mean? Did we fire Fowler? And I said, I don't know. It's Kevin Acey report that Seidler bought him out. 
And this, you know what this owner said to me? First time hearing of it. <laughs> This just came down. Oh, that's exciting. News. Yeah, yeah, but it, but on the other hand, Major League Baseball has already approved it, so it's it had to have been in the works. It's just they, it doesn't seem like they told anybody. No, how about that? So, what do you think this means? Um, <laughs> will anything change with the Padres, either on the field or the front office, or anything with Seidler taking taking over? Well, I think we've already seen the biggest change, which is 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 Ron Fowler's bulldog Wayne Partello was ousted a couple weeks ago. And, you know, that was reported as if it was his own choice and he's going in to start his own marketing business. But he was Ron's guy. He he was the protector, if you will. And and so once he was gone and now Ron's out, it, it, be, it really becomes Peter's organization now. So you think that the Wayne move was related to the Fowler-Seidler situation? I'm just putting two and two together. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I, I see. I mean, I get it, but interesting. All right. Is this ridiculous? I'm having yes. a phone call. You can barely on hear show. Craig. All right. Oh, you can barely hear Craig. Oh, we could hear right. him, but just oh. not great. Oh, Craig, I got to go. I'll call you back. Thanks. So my question yeah. to you, I thought my, I, my question, I, let me get you go. For, I mean, good. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. So you, you're making it seem like the, this move is contentious. Like it was not. So when you first started speaking about it with Bert was on, you made it seem like this was a plan from day one. Like once Peter is ready and healthy and and fully back to 100%, he's ready to take over day to day. But now it kind of seems like this was not the plan. It sounds a little bit more contentious in your eyes. Here's what I think. I think that Peter always expected that he was going to be the person to take over the team. Okay. That's what I think. He Well, I know for sure that's what he thought. Um, he had dealt with his own health related issues. Can you guys hear my dryer in the background? Yeah. A little yeah, bit. Yeah. Very annoying. I know I'll have to turn it off. Um, I think that Peter always expected that he would take over. I think that Ron knew that Peter was eventually going to take over. But I also believe that Ron wanted to see this thing through. And just as what does that mean, though? Through. Well, get good. I mean, I suppose if you're Ron, listen, let's let's because I mean, remember, he was the one that was like, hey, if this doesn't work out, heads will roll, including mine. Right. Well, like, uh, his was his head supposed to roll after this year? I don't nope. think so. Right. They won. So so could could you make the case that all Ron wanted to do was mm -hmm. deliver a winner and now the Padres on his watch have won and he can ride off into the sunset happy and feel accomplished. I would argue that Ron Fowler doesn't need the money. So Ron Fowler has no reason to sell his shares to Peter Seidler. And that the only reason he would ever sell is because Peter is saying, I'm ready to take over now. It's time for a new face, a new voice. It's time to start changing this organization and running it in a different way. I'm ready to do that. And Ron's thinking to himself, well, it's just getting good. Like I, I'm, I'm the face of the team. I'm the, the voice of the team and we're just getting good. It, it Now it's fun. Yeah. Because it, if I'm Ron, I'm, if I'm getting pushed out, I'm pretty pissed. Cause I was like, so I had to take all the crap years. I had to be the face. I had to go out and bash every player that was on our team in 2014 saying it was a waste. And I took the brunt of it from fans. I was in front of all these social summits. I was in front of like doing all this. And now that we're good, you want to come in and push me out. So is that kind of what you're saying? Like we're, well, here's, yeah. So, so here's, here's what all these owners are hoping though. I wonder what valuation Ron got. In other words, how much if, did he own if, in the first place? Well, let, let's just, let's just play with Ron Fowler owned 10% of the Padres. And when he, when they bought the Padres from the previous John Moore's crew and they paid $400 million for the Padres, if Ron Fowler owned 10%, let's call it $40 million. Okay. If the Padres now are worth, call it a billion five, I'm making up a number, but that's how much things have gone up in professional sports. If Peter Seidler buys Ron Fowler's 10% at a billion five valuation, that's $150 million. Ron would have taken his 40 million from eight years ago and turned it into 150 million as of today. Now, yeah. every owner, April, every, a, April, 2020, $1.45 billion valuation, according to Forbes. I wasn't too far off. So every owner who who's a part owner of the Padres wants to know what the value is. Forbes says 1.45 million, but if Seidler paid Fowler, Billy. 
on a higher valuation, that means everybody has just made more money, so to speak, on paper. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think Ron Fowler sold his, again, in my scenario, his 40 million for 150 million because he wanted the 110 million. I don't think Ron Fowler cares about money that much at this stage of his life. He's an ultra wealthy guy. He gives money away. So Ron Fowler to me leaves the Padres, not because he's happily ready to hand off the franchise to Peter Seidler. The reason Ron Fowler leaves the organization in my outsider looking in cynical mind perspective is because there's a power struggle between the two of them. And the only way to get Fowler out is to buy him out at top dollar. That's my perspective on it. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe I've just built this fantasy in my mind. That's that's how I see it. I think what you said makes sense in a way that, you know, I'm, I'm glad you answered the phone because what Craig said actually made what you said make a lot more sense because he spoke from more of a, a personal perspective that he thought he enjoyed doing a job. He thought from a lifestyle standpoint that that's why he was doing it. Again, like you say, it's not about the money. It's about the challenge. It's about the notoriety right. of being that guy for that it, team it's in the, the city. It's the prestige of yeah. I'm the owner of the Padres. Now, by the way, just so you know, I'll put all the cards on the table. Craig knows Ron relatively decently because they sit on the same board with the San Diego sports innovators, or maybe it's the um, the Hall of Champions. Uh, but regardless, they they know each other. There's a relationship. And I'm not saying like Craig is best friends with Ron Harley. I'm just telling you that they know each other. And so Craig knows that what Ron loved in life was being 70 something, having made his money and now owning an asset and fronting for an asset that's pure San Diego. He loved that, Ron. Yeah. So I don't see Ron happily walking away from this. But you think you know, it's, you, can it be contentious though? Because he didn't sell all his shares, right? So he's still going to be... Maybe it's just for PR that he's still going to be an advisor, he, but he still is going to own some shares, according to the report. So well, is it maybe, as maybe maybe Ron, maybe Ron was like, "Listen, I will I will move out." Um, I again in my scenario, he owns ten percent. So he, Ron says, "Look, I want I want you to pay me based on the one point five billion dollar valuation to buy nine percent, but I'm holding on to one percent because I want it to be in my family forever." Possible. Very possible. Interesting, though, because how much was Peter involved in the day to day before this? So when and because we always say, like, how much control does like Jace Tingler actually have? Is it really all AJ Preller making lineups? Has it been Ron putting his hand in? Has it like who what's the power structure at the Padres organization actually look like with Ron? compared to what it's going to look like with Peter. Is there ma major changes coming? I'm not talking about I, coaching staff or anything or anything like that, but when you change owners, which basically they did, normally a lot of other changes follow. So what's going to change a, there? I don't think a person that smart in business would do something like this without She's thinking clean. it through. Mm. I know. I, I, and plus, if this has already passed through the ranks in baseball, it's already been approved. They, he's got a plan. He's got a vision for it. I don't think he just woke up a couple of days ago and was like, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of this guy. I'm gonna buy him out. I don't think it went like that. I no. think I mean this, this is a, a plan. He just he's, ex he's I agree. executing. I agree with that too. I was just asking, just what now though? Like what now with we're we're used to the way this organization runs right now, but is it gonna change when Peter comes in and puts his hands on it day to day? Well, the other part of it is is now that you Peter has acquired whatever chunk he's gotten from Ron. Does he want to hold it? Does he want to bring in additional partners? The O. Epstein wants maybe? some ownership. You know, you know, you look at the, the O. Epstein, Epstein said his next job. He's gonna he he doesn't just want to be GM. He wants yeah. to be owner. You know, you look at this is a, another put two and two together. Theo Epstein from from Boston now to mm. uh, Chicago, and now P, you know Theo Epstein is is out there as an available free agent, and now Ron's bought out, and Peter's got a part of the franchise. And could Theo be the guy that I'm just throwing out an idea that comes in, takes a piece of the pie, and then you know uh, Peter's like, look, here's the smartest thing I could do: hand it off to a great baseball guy. And let him run the day-to-day -day operations, and let AJ report to him, et cetera, et cetera. I, who knows? I mean, I don't he started know. Started in San Diego, right? Man, let's, let's I don't. I, I don't think Theo Epstein's got a hundred million in his pocket. No, 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 no. He doesn't have it, but he doesn't have to put the cash out. 
you know, Theo Epstein doesn't have to put the cash out. He, he can, he can just be the baseball ops guy, the sweat equity guy. And what does he really get? You know, a, a small percentage for this advisory role. Um, or who knows, maybe, maybe Theo's got a whole bunch of money behind him now and says, Hey, Peter, we want to buy in. We'll pay 200 million to buy in for 10%. I'm just making up an, an, a concept here, but look, there's a flip side to all of this too, by the way, which is what if, what if I'm wrong? What if Ron Fowler was like, Hey, Peter, listen, um, I'm 76. I'm super satisfied. We've made it to the playoffs. The organization is set up for the future. You know what? I'll take my money off the table. I'll keep a small piece of the pie. I'll get out of the way. It's your time now. And what if Ron just walks away happily and they did a, a, a gentleman's agreement? It wasn't as contentious as I'm making it sound out to be. What if I'm completely yeah. wrong? And what if these guys have been working on this for the last year and a half, or maybe they've been working on it for the last six months? Who knows? Yeah. But I know names, I know names and titles are just that names and titles, but the fact that he gets to still be called vice chairman makes it me lean more that way, I guess. Like towards no, that it chairman, wasn't. Vice chairman is imagine a head coach getting fired from a from a job and they make him the offensive coordinator. Okay. And the offensive coordinator <laughs> becomes the head coach. So does the offensive coordinator who just became the head coach give play calling duties? to the guy who used to be the head coach, who's now the offensive yeah. coordinator. No, they've switched positions. And so for me, it went from Ron's the lead to now Peter's the lead. And now if Peter's the lead, Ron is not a backseat kind of guy. I don't think not, not right now, but I, I don't think 76. You never know. I don't know. Maybe he is. Who knows? Okay. Listen, it is uh it is a Wednesday afternoon. Grande is going to have the highlight of the day in just a matter of moments. I do want to say thank you to my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. And the reason I want to thank Gary right here is because I want to talk about the Aztecs for a minute. Gary is an Aztec for life. Every time we have him on, he's got his San Diego state flag in the background. He's as local as local can be. And if you need help buying selling or refinancing and saving a bunch of money. Gary has helped literally hundreds of great friends through the nearly 20 years of being associated with this show. Gary Cooper, we appreciate you. Thank you for saving all the great friends a ton of money. Call him 858-376-1299. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Okay. Does San Diego State have a quarterback controversy all of a sudden? Yes. You, you have, you have the, the one quarterback is the kid Baker out of Helix high school who, um, came in last year and performed and came back this year as the starter, but they got this kid, Lucas Johnson, who's, um, from Mount Carmel high school, who was originally supposed to go to San Diego state, who later took back his commitment, went to Georgia tech. He played a little bit. He got hurt some, he never really had success at Georgia tech. He comes back to San Diego state. As, as a guy late in his career, they thought there was going to be a great competition at camp. Baker won it, but Lucas Johnson is a dynamic athlete. He was an incredible high school player. Georgia Tech came and got him away from San Diego State. He's home, and might he be the better of the two? All of a sudden, it looks like San Diego State is going to have a real quarter, a local high school quarterback controversy on their hands. I actually think this is great news. I liked Lucas Johnson in high school. When he, I was with PPR, he was a senior. And I interviewed him, interviewed his dad. I thought he was a talented kid. I thought that San Diego State was the best route for him then. Uh, but you can't fault a kid for wanting to try at Georgia Tech. Bigger market, bigger bigger football market, that is. And a better opportunity for him to be seen. But the fact that he's back, I think that's great for him as well. And I think that, I think that he should – I think he'll probably win the job. I think we're about to see a little Taysom Hill, Drew Brees, thing happening for, oh, for God, this no. week please no we're gonna I, he already said brady hope we might see i he said specifically when teams have to worry about two quarterbacks it creates confusion i think we might do that especially like in the Mountain west you're not really facing at like some crazy defense you know that old school sec defenses so <laughs> i think we're going to see that for a bit if carson baker does not improve which he has not shown according to brady he has not improved the way they thought he was going to improve then lucas johnson will probably take over because he has more experience he he brings more to the table just as far as his legs go and right. this team is really a running team anyway so how much does it i know that they like rocky long said that they were going to switch to a different type of quarterback brady hoke never said that 
this school is still a running school. They're still going to try and rush for 200, 300 yards every game and try and manage to throw 150 every game. That's the way this offense is going to go this season. So if Lucas can add to that rushing total and able to throw 100 yards, I could see that happening. Here's the weird thing about San Diego State, though, just real quick, and then we're going to get to the highlight of the day. They're playing, is it this week's game on yes. CBS? Okay, yes. so that means that's like, I think it's Brad Nessler is the um, play-by-play no. guy. Yeah, Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. Gary Danielson. This is like the number one college football team. This is Jim Nance and Romo of Saturday. This is Florida versus Georgia, LSU versus Alabama. This is big time CBS, not CBS College Sports, not CBS Sports Network, not one of these little uh, cable channels that nobody's watching. I'm telling you right now, amazing. That I might San, watch this. That San, put, put it up on the screen one more time, Alex, for those that are, are watching. Um, it kind of went up quickly. Uh, and for those listening, I can repeat it. San Diego State versus Nevada this Saturday at 1230 for the entire country to see. That's Mountain right. West football on real CBS, not cable CBS. That's what happens the, when SEC's, every FCC game gets canceled. That's why you need, that's why you needed to play if you were the Mountain West because there would be fewer games available and television is going to look for we need football. Yep. That's why there's Mac football games on ESPN every freaking night. I don't care about Toledo versus Kent State, but it's on. Yeah. And Scott, since you brought they're it playing, up, since you brought it up, that Mac is my that is my highlight of the day right there. The fact that San Diego State's going to have national eyeballs on Saturday. All you got to do go to kaplanandcrew.com. Scroll down a tiny bit. Click that Tory Holistics banner. It takes you to this page. That's going to get you 20% off that purchase when you spend a minimum of $75 and use a promo code 1090. Promo code 1090 at checkout. Tory Holistics, KaplanandCrew.com. Check it out. Highlight of the day, San Diego State nationally on TV Saturday. Let's go. That's crazy. They go from playing on like a local cable channel that nobody even saw the game. Which, by the way, didn't yeah. come out on my – I have Cox. I it, it was like some high school show. I know. And then uh, and now they're going to be playing on big CBS, on national CBS. Thanks, Tori Holistics. Highlight of the day. There you go. All right, coming up, John Clayton will be here, NFL insider. What's he going to tell us as we're going into such a monster week ahead? John Clayton is next. All right, everybody. John Clayton is back on Kaplan and Crew. It is time for our NFL Insider Report. John Clayton is here. And, uh, John, I want to say let's jump right into it because you're on the sidelines of Seahawks broadcasts. You know front row what's wrong with the Seahawks defense and how they've come back to the pack. The NFC West has gotten crazy because Kyler Murray can throw the ball running to his left 55 yards in the air with that rope. Um, and the Rams beating the Seahawks sets up for just a monster week Thursday night, Monday night. John Clayton, how do you see the NFC West right now? Well, right now it's trending toward the Rams and the Cardinals. And we'll find out on Thursday night you know, where the Cardinals stand, can they, if they can beat the Seahawks for the second straight time. And there's a lot of things that's real positive for the Cardinals going in. Now, again, they're down to only – three healthy defensive linemen, you know, because they lost Corey Peters and, you know, they only have one guy, Michael Dagra on the practice squad. So they're very thin on the defensive line. I don't think Jacob Phillips is going to be able to play because he's actually got hurt in the last uh, Seattle game. So they're undermanned on the defensive line, but you can see how good they are on offense. And the Seahawks defense has just been terrible. I mean, you know, they, uh, the pass rush was the problem, but now the, the secondary has been just horrible. And they go into this game most likely without their two starting cornerbacks, Quentin Dunbar and Shaquille Griffin. So they're going with DJ Reed and they're going with Trey Flowers, who's been up and down all year. But the big thing for them is they just have not been in sync. And they have to try to put something together to slow down Arizona. But this will be a high-scoring game. But if Arizona wins, then uh, all of a sudden they're starting to edge toward the division. The Rams prove something in the win against uh, Seattle because you know, they were the number two defense going into that game. But six of their first eight games were against six of the eight worst offenses in the league. And so the only two that they played were San Francisco, which was 12th at that time, and the uh, Bills, who were 13th. And in that Bills game, they fell behind 28-3 to in the first half, came back and took the lead, and then lost the game. And, of course, as you know, they lost uh, to San Francisco. So this was a test, and they passed the test. So all of a sudden, they look for real, and Seattle right now doesn't. Russell Wilson's in a funk right now. 
John Clayton is here. And, John, go over to the Arizona side. If Arizona doesn't beat Buffalo and Buffalo has ripped through Seattle and Arizona in back-to-back weeks and Miami has already uh, beaten Arizona on their, on their turf and they'd already gone to San Francisco and beat up on the Niners, I just want to hear what you think about Arizona because if they lose to Buffalo and they don't complete that Hail Mary, I think our perception of Arizona is different. So I'm with you. I, I think things are trending towards the Rams because of their defense. So what do you think about Arizona? Well, I mean, I think that uh, they're, I, I thought going into the season, they're going to be the most improved team in football. And clearly they've shown that, you know, because the fact that they're sitting there with a six and three record and uh, doing, moving the ball well on offense, uh, still have some issues on defense, but, you know, they got the blitzing scheme of Vance Joseph and that looks good. But, you know, you know you're right. It would be a different perception had they lost to Buffalo because that one, and if they lose to Seattle, because what's going to happen after that, Seattle has three games against NFC East teams, starting with Philadelphia. They got Washington. You know, they also have the New York Giants, and then they have the New York Jets. So all of a sudden, if Seattle wins, they're looking at probably to be eleven and three going into the last two weeks of the season when they play the Rams and 49ers. And at that stage, I don't think you know the, uh, Arizona could catch them. That's why this game is so vital for either team on Thursday night because the team that loses is going to be in a little tougher spot. But again, after this, Seattle has four puffies that they should be able to do some good things against. Hmm. All right. John Clayton is here. And um, all right. Thursday night's a huge game. Arizona and Seattle's a monster game. Sunday night's a monster game with Kansas City and the Raiders. And then Monday night is is another gigantic game related to the NFC West, in this case, the Rams and the Bucks. So, John, I'm just curious if if things are trending towards the Rams right now, another cross-country trip, this time to take on Tom Brady, who one week they can score a ton of points and they can win and another week they can get blown out. What do you think about the Rams and the Bucks Monday night? It's going to be a great game because, again, I, I did not know how good the Rams' defense was going to be, but it looks good. And because of that, you know, now they have a chance to hold down the Bucks. and the Bucks have been up and down on offense. Obviously, last week against the young Carolina defense, they put up 46 points. You know, they will still have to see if anything happens to Antonio Brown because they find out two weeks before they sign him, you know, he uh, broke a camera at this the con, uh, HOA place. And the HOA president didn't want to change anything. He threw a bike and all those different things. I don't know if that's going to go into any possible extension of the uh, suspension that he has. It very well could, because again, the reason it wasn't uh, you know reported to the police, or I guess they, they have the evidence there, is because the HOA president was afraid that Antonio was going to go beat him up. But here it is. It's like you know, it's the same Antonio. One day he's good, one day he's bad. October fifteenth, he was bad, and so now. Uh, you know that Tom Brady wants him, and we'll see how that's going to go. When you look at the AFC side, especially the AFC West, huge matchup, Chiefs, Raiders. I don't see the Raiders winning this team. I know they're 6-3. and three. I know they beat good teams, including the Chiefs. But the Chiefs, we all know that Andy Reid coming off the bye week. I just see the Chiefs easily winning this division and easily winning this game. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Because now when you start to look at <clears throat> the most valuable player race, I think now you have to put Patrick Mahomes ahead of Russell Wilson. And Derek Carr has done a great job this year. But a lot of that is because of the play calling of John Gruden. You know, Carr obviously has picked up his game. But the fact that they're running the ball so well for the <clears throat> Raiders, that now changes the dynamics so there's less pressure on Derek Carr. But all the pressure's on Patrick Mahomes, and he's responded every time. And so that's why I agree. I think you know, this game goes to them. And again, off the bye week, they're so good under Andy Reid teams. It's funny that we keep yeah. talking about the MVP thing too. Like, oh, who's going to be the MVP this year? Who's going to be MVP? No one's talking about uh, Patrick Mahomes. I believe he's thrown one interception this year. Like, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is so clearly the MVP, and he's just flying, cruising under the radar. Like, no one's talking about Patrick. Like, are we? Is the is the is the country forgetting how good Patrick Mahomes is? No, I, I can't see how they can. Because, again, he's that good. You know, he's on pace for, like, what, what, 48, 49 touchdown passes. I know Russell Wilson's still on pace to throw over 54. But uh, <clears throat> Patrick right now has taken the lead because of the four-week slump and the turnovers that Russell has. But I still think it's a two-way race. He probably put, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Ben Roethlisberger now in the mix. But, again, not up to the Patrick Mahomes standard, as we see. Yeah. John, let's get to the, let's get to the real story here. Uh, Bill Glazer – Bill Lazor was calling plays. 
It was worse than Matt Nagy. I don't know how that could have been possible, but it was. And then to add insult to injury, it was to the terrible Vikings. And then to put the cherry on top of that, Nick Foles got his hip apparently knocked out. So now we might be back to Mitch Trubisky. What, from your perspective, from have you ever seen anything go this bad this fast? Oh my no, you've you seen it go bad, but not this fast. You're right about that. <laughs> it's rare because you know, I, I know when they were five and one, and you were loving everything. The world was great. <laughs> it's funny every day. It's like it's like I don't know. This is this is, doesn't look like a five and one team. And you can come back and say, well, the record is what the record is. But now you can see it was not a five and one team. It was able to take advantage of some things. They got a great defense that we know, but the offense is terrible. I mean, the, and this this is where. Some things have to be reviewed, you know, whether it's going to be Matt Nagy, whether it's going to be the general manager, Ryan Pace, because they've done, I mean, the running back situation is awful. What they've done at running back is terrible. I mean, David Montgomery being the number one guy, I mean, that's just ridiculous. And that, now they're paying the price and now he's hurt. So there's no running game that puts more pressure on the quarterbacks. And you can see that the quarterbacks aren't responding to the pressure. And then you know how bad the offensive line has been performing. So when you put that combination in, you know, it's only going to get 19 points, and if not less, and uh, if it's less, there's going to be more losses. So right now, I think it's a mess. I think the biggest really red flag was Love when it, Cordero Patterson was your starting running back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right when a guy's got a, a number eight on uh, as his first number, when you got a, a receiver number at running back, well, you the got thing some is they couldn't, they couldn't get the you know Devin Hester through the COVID program so that the, you know he can come in and be the running back. I mean, one thing that's amazing though, how about the fact that there's been the you, you got Devin Hester and Patterson, you know the top two guys for touchdowns on returns in NFL history. It's pretty amazing. I know that, that is, is pretty incredible. awesome, and it was a beautiful return he had the other night, uh, but it certainly wasn't enough. John Clayton is here, and um, John Clayton is our NFL insider. So, John, again, we've talked about like the biggest games of the weekend. We've talked about the Rams and the Buccaneers, and I know it's only Wednesday, but we're we're projecting forward. Thursday night is a huge game in the NFC West between Seattle and Arizona, and we mentioned Kansas City and the Raiders on Sunday. But really, one of my big games of the weekend because I can't wait for this. The 0-9 Jets come to the Rams' house to take on San Diego. Whose house? Rams' house. Yeah. John, could the Jets get their first win this Sunday over San Diego while playing in the Rams' house in L.A.? Uh, no. I mean, th this team is getting worse, not better. I mean, they cut the, this uh, corner here. Uh, you know, they cut their starting – the pair to Sear, their starting cornerback, mm -hmm. they cut him, so they have nothing at the cornerback position. You know, they brought him in on a one-year deal, and that didn't work out. Then, uh, you know, they've got uh, probably no Sam Darnold for a couple more weeks. You know, they've got a 37-year-old at running back and Frank Gore and a bad offensive line, and now they're less on defense. And so I think that the, particularly with the way that Justin Herbert's playing, he's going to pick them apart. And you know, they can't get into a scoring battle. I mean, Joe Flacco still can do some good things, but not with the receiving and tight end group that he has. And you know, a questionable running game. John, how can you continue to employ a head coach when your eight your eight year veteran wide receiver all pro says we were just confused out there? And on the opposite end of the of the spectrum, the team you just played with a rookie quarterback in his third game tells the media, I thought the NFL would be harder. Like, how is that not the biggest indictment on your coaching staff and how you can remain employed if you're Anthony Lynn? Yeah, I thought, well, it's going to be tough because, again, I mean, he's put himself in the tough spot, as we've talked before, about not being able to finish games. And then now it's a matter in this game against a Denver team that is less talented than the uh, Chargers, uh, you know, he gets blown out. And so that's got to be scary, too. So, I mean, you can just send changes coming uh, there because it's not working. And, again, it's great because they got a great young quarterback. They've got a lot of good defensive players, but it's just not clicking. And if it's not clicking, then, they, of course, they click the button on the coach. John, if that, if that job goes to the open market, is that the most desirable job on the open market with, that, with those tools that they actually have on offense when everyone is healthy, that young quarterback and that team being in Los Angeles? Because yeah. the, Jet, the Jets, New York's great. I don't want to coach the Jets. I don't want anything to do with the Jets. 
No, I would agree because, again, it's like you want to be – if you're going to be a coach, and particularly if you're going to be an offensive head coach, you want the quarterback. And they've got a great one in Justin Herbert. And so, I mean, you're looking at it and say, okay, where would I rather go? Would I rather go to the Chargers or rather go to the Houston Texans to be with Deshaun Watson? Well, Houston's got such a mess right now with their cap, it's going to take them two to three years to be able to get that all sorted out. I mean, four wide receivers making a combined $44 million a year, and they got a $22 million left tackle, and you know they got a $13 million a year running back in David Johnson, who's now always hurt. I mean, that's going to take a long time to be able to do it. So it's like you don't want to go – even though you get a great quarterback in Deshaun Watson, you'd rather go to a place that has more talent and more chances to get better, and maybe you can come off and get some wins. Do your homework, people. I'm serious. I know it seems like an attractive job, brand-new stadium that the Rams built. You know, you think, hey, I'm cool. I'm in L.A. It's Hollywood. I'm going to you know, go to really great restaurants, and I'm going to see celebrities in the house. Um, the problem is, is you're going to the Clippers. And so I realize that there's only 32 of these jobs and you'll take any one you can get. Um, this is the lowest paying head coaching job in the NFL. Seems like every year. I don't think they're going to get rid of Anthony Lynn. I really don't. Mm, I hope not. I like Anthony Lynn. <clears throat> but, I mean, you have you do to. Too. You got to sense that changes are coming. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, because it's just not working. I mean, you know, can you go, they won five wins last year and now they're going to probably lose – what, 12, 13 games, whatever the number is going to be. I mean, they're going backwards, not forwards. And in the, particularly with the new stadium, hoping that uh, next year you're going to get people in the stadium. Are people going to consider going to the stadium if the team's going to be coming off a 3-13 and or a 4-12 and season? Yes, people will consider going to the stadium so long as they're rooting for the opposite team. Okay. Dude, that franchise, even, even that franchise in L.A. is still a big deal. The quarterback got a haircut, and it's national news. Well, it's because like, it's it, a terrible it, haircut. I don't like, know if it's national news. Dude, it's not national news. It's Twitter news, <laughs> and it's Twitter news. It's and... all over Bleach Report. Oh, wow. Ooh, geez. Wow. That's I guess, time. yeah, I mean, it's probably, it, right now, it's probably trending more than something Trump is saying. Mm -hmm. Could be. Uh, well, that's not hard. He's not, he's not, he's not going to be president anymore. Huh. You say not what he says. That's true. Also true. <laughs> also, according to him, he got four more years left. So. Yeah, but I, I can tell you this. What does Donald Trump and the New York Jets have in common? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know. It's their record. Like, for example, in these cases in the States, uh, Donald Trump is one for 25 in those, on his lawsuits, and the New York Jets are 0-9. You know what that one's going to be, though, for the Jets? <laughs> yeah. You know it's coming, John. Oh, my God. You know this one Listen, win is coming. Let's not forget, in 2016, no, the Chargers were still in San Diego because the Chargers have always done this. They're the one win for the Browns that year. This is, this is not unprecedented for the Chargers to do this. No, that's true. And, uh, <clears throat> and you saw it a couple of years ago with the Cleveland Browns. What team was the one in December that ended up losing to the Cleveland Browns? And that, of course, was the uh, – and that was, would have been back-to-back -back winless seasons. It was the first of the uh, – what was going to be another winless season. But, of course, you know, the Chargers saved the Browns and gave them one win. Mm -hmm. I think the only reason Adam Gase is still the head coach of that team is because they're trying to lose. I don't, I don't think there's, no, there's any other reason they're hanging on to this dude other than to secure the number one pick. And if, they, if the Chargers lose to them, they've got to fire Anthony Lynn immediately. Immediately. Yep. Mm -hmm. And bench Herbert. Stop it. So what, do you, what would you think about uh, Eric Bieniemy coming over and being the head coach? See, John, so you're not the only one that's brought that up, and it's interesting you bring that up because when was the last time the Chargers actually got, like, the hot coach? They mm -hmm. don't do that, right? Like, they, they go get coordinators with no personality. Right, but Biennemi, the one thing about Biennemi that really fits here is that Biennemi was a player with the Chargers. Biennemi is from L.A. What works against Biennemi is they are going to fire a guy who's a former player as a running back, who's a former running back's coach who's worked his way up, to hire another guy who was a running back who's gonna, who will, will have worked his way up. So I, I, you just ask the question, are they going to go offensive-minded? Are they going to go defensive-minded? Are they going to go quarterback guru? I, I'm not sure. The enemy makes all the sense in the world. And if they were smart and they had any sense of showmanship and business, he would be an automatic in L.A. But I don't know that the Chargers have that sense. 
Yeah, but they should because, again, if they're going to make a change, you want somebody on offense because they've got the good young quarterback, and there's plenty of good defensive coordinators around. I mean, the problem still remains. I know that Matt Nagy gave up the play call. And that took it down to 11 head coaches who were calling plays because Bill O'Brien got fired. And, of course, you had the Adam Gaze giving it up. But, you know, there's not enough coaches right now on offense that are calling plays that if you want to go four or five down deep, if that's where the Chargers go, it's going to be a little bit tougher. I mean, it's like, you know, now you're talking about, you know, maybe going for um, uh, what the uh, you know, a lot of no name type of people that uh, you don't know concede or cannot. I would anticipate a no-name type of coach going to the right. Chargers next year. See, I, I dis- I, this is where I disagree. I okay, think give, that- me a name. give me a name. Who's there because, it, Dude, let's not forget. Before you say what you're about to say, Browner, let's not forget. When they hired Anthony Lynn, they were already in L.A. Like, that was mm-hmm. their big splash. Like, right. we're in L.A. now. Me, we, go, like, and we got Anthony Lynn. That's not been like... So you, you, you think it could be more the Mike LaFleur, whose brother is Matt LaFleur. He's off, off in the, <laughs> the 49ers. Or would they go with Arthur Smith from the Tennessee Titans? Or yeah, yeah it's going to be something I, like the Bengals hired this like who's it Taylor? LaFleur. Is or is that what's his name? Oh yeah, Lafleur's in Green Bay. What's yeah. the guy's yeah. name? Mike, in, Mike Ford is brother in San Francisco. Yeah. Let me throw think, one other factor at you though, and it's money. When the Raiders went out and got Gruden, they paid him ten years, ten million. My question to you guys is this: If they were going to go find a name guy. And the name guy was a $10 million a year coach. You think the Chargers are willing to pay that? Me personally, I think now, yes. Because in that market with that quarterback, this is why I think Eric's the perfect selection at this point in time. They're going to pay because they have to. Now they have no other choice. This is the hot guy. And you have a franchise next level quarterback. But this is a match made in heaven. If you're Eric, you might take a little less to do this job because what's going to come to you with that success? Oh man. Mm. I think that you're you're forgetting. I think the three of us, not you, Browner, can agree here. This is already a cheap organization who not only has had a tiny amount of revenue in a tiny stadium the last three years, there's no revenue coming in this year. What makes you think all of a sudden with no fan revenue at all coming in for the last four years, they're going to start breaking the bank right now? It's just not going to happen. No, I agree. What, now, what happens if Matt Nagy's let go in Chicago? Could he Ooh. be an option? Because obviously oh, he's on a game. I hope so. No, he could be. Matt Nagy could be an option. He'd be a really he's good. No. He no, no. He he'd be a really good like quarterback coach, Matt Nagy. You know, <laughs> um, he'd make for a really nice like pro <laughs> personnel assistant. Guy. Is what he would make. <laughs> but he good equipment manager. Yeah, that's right. He'd make for a really nice, you know, uh, worker in the in the meal hall for a for, uh, guy, for the Chargers. A, a chef, a cafeteria, lunch lady. I, hey, listen, you got there's a lot of jobs there. Hey, John Clayton, it is great to be with you. We hope you and your wife are healthy and safe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, John Clayton. Thank you.